Oh. Who's paying for the taxi? Oh, I'll pay one way, you pay the other. Right. Have I got everything? Yes, yes, come on, just get in the taxi. Oh. Did you hear him? He can't wait to get on the dance floor. Do you know, it's ages since I got this dressed up. I'm really looking forward to a good night. Mm. Well, I hope it all goes well. Oh, I'm sure it will if we ever get there. Oh, look, uh, remember not to put the bottom lock on, cos I don't want to be waking you up in the early hours. <laughs> should be in bed by nine o'clock. Well, I can't get used to it. I bet I look like a ruddy penguin. You look very nice. Aye, oh, well, I reckon the person who sent this to the charity shop needs his bums feeling. Charity shop? Gran told you she bought it new. David. Come on, I think we'd better get in the car. We don't want to be late. Hang about. Is what this lad says true? You calling me a liar? <sighs> David, just go to Simon's, will you? <sighs> well? Oh, for goodness sake, I can't remember. Did I say charity shop? Yes, you did. You know you did. Because if you said you'd bought it new, you know what I'd have said. I'd have said, no, thank you. Keith, it's only a suit. Which I can't afford. <laughs> and what do you do? You, you, you lie to me. You, you make out it was second hand. I knew it was too good for someone to chuck away. Look, OK, I'm sorry. I just thought... It's that... very clear what you thought. Lie to the old fool. I bet you've all had a really great laugh at me, haven't you? You and your friends. I only told Gary... What do you take me for, Audrey? Some kind of gigolo? Oh, <laughs> Don't be silly, Keith. Silly? Yeah. Oh, go on, go, go and have some fun with your swanky friends. Oh, Keith, come on. It's the pinnacle, this is, of me year as president of Traders Association. And, uh, can I just say, while I'm still sober, <laughs> how, no, how, how very proud I am walking through them there doors with such a beautiful woman on me arm. I had thought I were going to have to bring Mildred from the wool shop. I need glasses five inches thick to call her beautiful. <laughs> well, you are paying me time and a half. I mean, you are the boss. Hey, no. No, see, no, I, I don't want you thinking like that. Tonight, I'm not a boss, or a baker, or, or even a, a, a president. No, tonight, Elizabeth, I'm a man. And you're... You're a woman. Digri! Oh, it's a lot heavier than it looks, isn't it? Best you can buy, that is, you know. I tried the cheaper ones, but the resonance wasn't the same. How long have you been drumming? Whew. My old mum said it was as if she'd given me a drumstick instead of a dummy. <laughs> You're very good. Thank you. You're very attractive. Sugar to bone. Thank you. Are you, um, you here with anyone in uh, particular? No, no one in particular. <clears throat> oh, sir. Right. I've seen you, there's something I want to say. I can't stand us being like this. And whose fault is it? Mine. Yeah, I know that. I'm so sorry. I know how much I've hurt you. You can begin to know how much you've hurt I still me. love you. I do. I can't stop thinking about was Jay, what we had. It was good. You can't say that it wasn't. And I hate myself for ruining it. I do want East. Oh, I hate you for ruining it too. Do you? Do you really hate me? Do you not feel anything still? Jay, I love you. Leanna, I've been hurt enough. I know, but we could make it work. We could go away. We could get away from here, but away from everyone. Start fresh. Just me and you, where no one knows us. This isn't fair. I know. And it's all my fault, and I'm really stupid. But please, I'm just begging you, just give me one more chance.
We're gonna stay here. What do you care? Penny. Come on, I'll make you a coffee. Whatever give you that idea. Well, I think you may be a little bit put out because I asked Keith to come with me tonight. I mean, normally you and me come together, don't we? Eh? Where is Keith? Uh, oh, no, he wasn't feeling so good. Oh, Jane, it's a Jane. Come on, well, look, Jane, come on. Hey, there, sorry, Jane. I'm spoken for. Oh, here oh, she is, the lovely Beverly. Mm. Now then, are you refreshed enough to wiggle your what's it? Oh, blimey, don't give a girl long to get her breath back. <laughs> he did love me. I know he did. He told 75 guests in a vicar he loved me. It didn't stop him ruining me life, though. Look, Carol, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Yeah, well, you can't blame him for everything that's happened in your life. I mean, you haven't been together for, what, 20 years? Whatever. You think what you like. You know, I hate being sober. Makes you remember everything too clearly. I'm going to... Look... It's hard for her. She's used to blotting everything out. I thought living with my mother was bad. Anyway, we haven't come to see her. We've come to see you. She's wrong, you know. He did love me. Still does. He slept with his son's girlfriend. That was just sex. He used to tell me that that was a trouble with him and Carol. That it was just sex. You know, he never loved her. I would say that, wouldn't I? You don't know him. I'll always love him. If you and Jamie got back together, you both know it'd never worked, don't you? You'd be bored in minutes, love. Lee never would have cheated on me. Yeah, but you would have, because if it hadn't been with me, it'd have been with someone else, wouldn't it? Right, so I'm just some slag, am I? No. Is that what you've been telling yourself? You never stood a chance, did you? You never even tried to get to know me, Danny. It was sex, Leanne. There was no need to get to know you, was there? What did I ever see in you? I ain't trying to blame you, Aren't you? Well, it sounds like it to me. I'm Is this what you've done before? Whenever you get caught with your trousers down, you just say, Oh, Frankie, I didn't know what she was doing. Look, all I'm saying is I think it's best if you stay away from Jamie, that's all. Look, Leanne, even if you talked him round into taking you back, you're only going to hurt him again, ain't you? Like I am. No, well, we can all ask ourselves that, love, can't we? It's just everything I've touched has crumbled. Oh, come on. Don't cry, babe. Come on. Shh, come on. <gasps> His name's Vernon. He's got a lovely wrist action. Right. I didn't think much of that dinner either, did you, Liz? I mean, at £25 a ticket, you'd think they'd be more original than roast chicken. I've never been out with a musician before, nor anyone creative. Do you think creative people are more passionate? I thought you were going out with that baker chap. Diggory? Yeah, Diggory. No, it's not my type at all. Hey, I'd have to be more than desperate to be even interested in Diggory. Oh. Here's some coming. Hi. Hi. Can I come in? Now? Yeah. Um... You're not dressed? No. Oh. You got company? No, but... Frank... Look, F Frank, please, it's not what you think! Audrey. 
So what are you doing here? Audrey, I've been stupid and stubborn. I'm sorry. Will you dance with me? No, Keith. No, I won't. But I can just about muster a waltz. <laughs> Jack, I've been stuck here all night. I've had the most miserable time, and it's all your fault. Look, OK, I bought you a suit. I actually spent my money on you. Jack, maybe I thought you were worth it. Audrey. No, honestly. Really, Keith, I have done everything I could to make you feel comfortable, because I was so looking forward to tonight. Instead of sitting in the Rovers or some cheap restaurant, I so wanted to be held on the dance floor by a man I thought maybe cared for me a bit. I do. Instead of someone that has behaved like some spoiled kid. Oh, then I'm going home now. It's over, we're finished. Audrey, do some time. If I could just show him how much he means to me. It's never going to happen, is it? This is it. For both of us, this is it. This, we, I suppose we deserve it, eh? This... nothing. Yeah. <sighs> you, my darling, are a rising star. And Penny is lucky to have you. And I'm very proud of you. <laughs> so, we're going into town and we are looking at suits and I won't take no for an answer. This is your mother talking, remember? All right. I went to see your dad last night. I thought you decided not to. Well, saying's one thing, actually doing's another. So that's why you were so quiet. What did he do to you this time? Nothing. I changed my mind and came back. You see? I've got willpower. Why don't you come with us? We'll make a day of it, the three of us. It'd be great, but I promised the girls I'd meet them. Go on. You enjoy yourself. Here you are. I've brought you some toast. Thought it'd be easiest. I've told you I don't want it. Now, come on. You've got to keep your strength up. But what for? It's not as if I need to. I'm not allowed to move, remember? It must be hard. It's like being in a straight jacket. It's doing me head in. I could kill that Nathan. I could kill him. What are you doing here? I'm helping myself to your whiskey. Yeah, so I see. Got me bank the rights now, ain't you? Hey, at least this time you know I'm thieving. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, as far as that's concerned, uh, I think I owe you an apology. Really? Yeah, well, it was a bank error, wasn't it? Some stupid clerk said it wasn't in there when it was. No. Is that right? You mean some stupid old man forgets to bank the cheque himself? Is that what you mean, Mike? Penny told me. Oh, did she? Well, she'd no right. Oh, well, that's it. If you can't blame me, blame the messenger. And ain't you forgetting something else? What? You're supposed to be apologising. Yeah, all right, I'm sorry, it slipped my mind. Look, I'm a very busy man. Is that the best you can do? Look, uh, Penny's doing a roast dinner. Do you feel like joining us? No. Oh. You'd be doing me a great favour. We won't have to ask for seconds. She's a terrible cook. And that's meant to tempt me, is it? Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? It was freezing. Oh, rubbish. I forgot what a bit of fresh air's like. Oh, thanks for reminding us. Is it okay if I go and dry up with a pint now? No! I'm gonna get the Monopoly out now. Hi, Auntie Sal! Hiya, Nicola! Well, uh, 
See you later. Why? There you. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Pin. That was great, mate. No, it wasn't. Lamb's supposed to melt in your mouth, not break your teeth. <laughs> well, maybe it was an old lamb. Hey, I'll be giving you pudding if you're not careful. No, no, I take it back. Pour yourself a scotch. You know how to do that, don't you? What are you doing, Meg? Setting the table. We've just had dinner. You're always on my back lately. Give me a break, will you? You okay? Yeah, fine. Look, I didn't mean that about the food, you know. It was great, honest. You're quiet. I know. Cheers. It's been a tough old week, Michael. You know Frankie's filing for divorce. No, I didn't. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's all talk. She had come round. Nah, not this time. Got to be honest with you. I'm thinking of packing it all in and going back to London. No, no, you can't do that. Why not? Neither of them want to know me. They're not the only family you've got, you know. No, I know. Don't get me wrong on all that, but, uh, I mean, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Me, you, him. But it ain't going to happen. You can't make yourself suddenly feel something you never have, Mike. That must be so embarrassing. Your own husband sleeping with your son's girlfriend. If I was her, I'd have left. I'd stick round here like some saddo. And that's nearest you get to sympathy, is it? Well, she doesn't deserve any sympathy, does she? From what I heard, she nicked him off his wife in the first place. 16-year-old babysitter seducing a bloke that age. Mind you, I bet you wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say no now, actually. Is that right? Well, maybe I should invite her over. Looks to me she wants to be left alone. No, I don't think so. I think she needs cheering up. What do you reckon, Charlie? I've no objection. Right then. Tracy. Not my idea, mate. Uh, excuse me, would you mind getting off my wall, please? It's a free country. That might be, but that's my wall. So you're not using it. Oh, really? Hi, Auntie Sal. Oh, well, I might have guessed there was a family connection there. I'm sorry, Sally, but would you mind asking your niece to get off my wall? Nicolette, just do as you're told. And she's... she's not my niece. Yeah, she is. Auntie Valda says when you were my age, you were a right tear away. Really? Yeah, she were always hanging around that pipe with lads. Oh, yeah, why don't you uh, go and get yourself some sweets? Come on. Oh, thanks, Auntie Sal. Generations removed, and uh, I think she was adopted. Why don't we go? Because I've just got around in. Besides, I'm just starting to enjoy myself. There you go. Oh, don't know if I can manage another. Oh, come on, let your hair down. You're right. Why shouldn't I enjoy myself? He certainly is. Do you know, I went round there the other night and practically caught him at it. You never? Yeah. So much for all this grovelling, eh? You know what you should do? You should play him at his own game. Find yourself a fella. Yeah. Maybe I should. Try rubbing his nose in it and see how he likes it. Exactly. You need somebody, uh, younger, available and devastatingly sexy. Somebody like, um... Like Charlie here. Well, thank you. <laughs> He's not bad, I suppose. Not bad. Is that the best you can manage? You're a very attractive man. And you are an extremely beautiful woman. If I was so beautiful, he wouldn't have kept playing away all the time, would he? Hey, hey. Don't let him or anybody else make you feel like that about yourself. You are fantastic. And if he doesn't appreciate that, it's his loss. Thanks, Charlie. Right, I'm going to live. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. You know, I reckon it's time maybe you went home. I think you're right. Tell you what, 
I'll take it. It's all right, I will. No, Charlie offered. Well, he doesn't have to bother now, does he? You know? <laughs> you two stay and enjoy yourselves. Oh, bag. <laughs> Maybe he wants some for himself. No, I doubt it. Not when he's got me. True. You'd be enough for any man. Oh, more than you could handle anyway. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. Have you got your key? <laughs> Look. <laughs> you know what I think? What? That God's punishing me for stealing Danny. And that's what I deserve in it. I'm nasty cow. No, you're not. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> you're cute. Do you know that? Let's get you inside, shall we? Oi, get your hands off her. What? I know your game. Sling a few vodka down in it and try your lap, but not with her, you don't. All right? I don't believe this. Oi! What's going on? Your mum was getting slaughtered in the pub. I thought she had a Great bit too much, so I decided to help her own. That's all. Yeah, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? It's the truth. Thank you, mate. Here. Let me help. Get out of it. It's because of you that she's in this state. Just go, Danny. You've done enough damage. Here. <laughs> Proud of yourselves, are you? you? Coming back then? Yeah, might as well. Go on, should be fine. Poor little thing. All alone. Nothing to reach out for but the bottle. You drink till it's empty. But you're still empty inside. Little teenage slut. You saw her love completely off her head. Couldn't even make it across the street without someone having a carrier. Yeah, somebody being Nathan. I think maybe she knew what she was doing there. Not last night she didn't. She was too far gone. Anyway, she ain't like that. She don't mind a drink, but only in moderation. It's normally me she's telling when I've had Danny. enough. Danny. She's like, what? Shut up about her, will you? What? Well, you were going on about her all last night. Now it's the same this morning. Why should you be bothered what she gets up to? It's like you'd left her. No, thank you very much. She chucked me out. Oh, yeah, of course. How silly. How could I forget? Look, Leanne, don't mean to say I've just switched off from her, does it? Don't work like that, love. Obviously. So what are you going to be doing today? Why? What do you care? It's Frankie you should be asking. So you care about, not me. Hiya. Hi. Morning. Ugh, gross. Man, it's dead pig sensation. Do you know what the most important thing in life is? Why? Theme of the day. Being able to do what you like. Wrong. The most important thing in life is self-respect. And what do I mean by that? I mean you should never let anybody persuade you to do anything your conscience isn't happy with. Because if you do, you'll never be able to deal with that person in an honest and direct way ever again. I suppose you do that over here because you don't want your mother to see. Is that it? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. See you later, Grandad. And this, above all, to thine own self be true. Which I haven't been. Two hamburgers with chips and drinks comes to £5.60. Yeah, and we'll pay for it after we've had it. Well, no, I'm afraid I require payment in advance. You don't normally. Well, I do on this occasion. What, cos you think we're gonna run off without paying? Why well, doesn't matter. Which means, yeah, you do. That's discrimination, that is. Yeah, you're calling us thieves. We can sue you for that. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> we will. And we'll say we don't like the way you've been looking at us either, trying to rub yourself against us. I beg your pardon? Get you into a lot of bother, that. And I do mean a lot. Be easier just to give us what we want and we'll go. Sophie, just what is going on? You won't serve us. I was merely requesting payment in advance, which is our normal policy with unaccompanied juveniles. He was calling us thieves and looking at us funny. Oh, be quiet. I'm sorry, Roy. Perfectly all right. No, it's anything but. 
you, young lady, are supposed to be having school dinners, not wandering the streets, making a nuisance of yourself. And as for you, Nicola, I can't believe even your mother would be pleased with this kind of behaviour. Now, go on, off to school, both of you. Come on. It's just a policy we, we had to introduce. No, I apologise for my daughter's behaviour, Roy, though I would say it's the result of the company that she started keeping. What? Morning, son, how are you? What do you want? Just wondered how Frank is, that's all. I mean, she was in a bit of a state last night, wasn't she? Do you mind if I come in and have a word? Wait here. Frankie? Dad's here. What, in the house? No, he's at the door. Do you want to talk to him? No. Don't want to, but I suppose I'd better. Mr. Popularity. And who are you, exactly? I don't want to talk to you, do I? Can I just say how grateful I am to you for what you've done? You really have made me feel an awful lot better. What are you on about? You dumping Frankie for another woman, like you did me. You see, I thought it was my fault that there was something wrong with me, but... No. It's you, isn't it? You've got this... Mum got to him first. ...where you can't help yourself. Every few years you have to move on to a younger model. So, I don't blame myself anymore. So thank you, because I really do feel a lot better. And you know what I'd like to think? I'd like to think that, deep down, that's why you did it. But then again, it could just be that you're a louse. Your turn. What? What have you still got her here for? What's that all about? Oh, nothing to do with you. What you want? Well, I'm just concerned about you, that's all. Oh, concerned about me? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You've been worrying, have you? Yes, I have, cos you was in a right two and eight last night, weren't you? Yeah? And why was that? Why do you think that was, Danny? Go on, have a guess. Well, I, I Do you know... think finding you in that tart in bed together might have had something to do with it? Do you think that, eh? After everything you said about how sorry you are and how you wanted to come back to me, you think that might have anything to do with it? And I am sorry. Still? Oh. Well, there's no need to be, because I'll tell you what, I am glad. I'm going to work. All right, see you later. See you later. Yeah, ta son. Have a good day. And why am I glad? Because now I know where I am, don't I? Now I know you never meant a single word. <laughs> Jamie? Look, you probably don't want to, but do you think we could have a word? Yeah, sure, when? How about dinner time? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. We're having a drink in the Rovers. Next minute, he decides to walk Mrs. Offa Red Baldwin home. He doesn't come back, he leaves me there. You weren't exactly on your own. Oh, you mean Charlie? Well, yeah, he did speak to me, but he probably felt sorry for me. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you were expecting me back. So what happened, Nathan? Did she make you an offer you couldn't refuse? I walked her to her door, her son was there. He looked after her. Would you believe him? I would, yeah. Well, I'm not sure. So, what really happened, mate? What I said. So, how much do I owe you, love? Uh, oh, 18 pounds 50, Rita, please. All right. Oh, hello. Oh, you'll see to Rita. What are you doing with that? I'm returning it. Well, I'm afraid you can't. I'm not running a dress hire shop here. Well, yes, I can. For one thing, I won't be going to any more posh do, so I won't be needing it, will I? Right, then. I'll put it there. Right. So, that's that, then. I just wanted to tell you that living with Frankie and my mum, I see what they're like. They both fell for my dad and they both got left high and dry. Well, not so dry in my mum's case. Now, from what I've been hearing, you're determined that you're going to be number three. What are you saying? Just that. I mean, okay, you can do what you like, but don't fool yourself. Sooner or later, you're going to be joining Frankie and my mum in the rejects department. Well, then why don't we try again? Because it's not possible. 
after what happened. I couldn't. I just couldn't. Right. So you've just got me here to tell me what? To stop away from your dad? I'm just saying. Think about the other two women in his life. How they ended up. Right. And that's your good deed for the day, is it? Giving advice to a fallen woman. I'm sorry if you expected something else. Oh, well, don't worry. Because I won't be doing it again. Now that I'm spoiled, now that I'm too dirty for you to come anywhere near me. Come on. Besides, you know what? Now that I've got used to a real man, I don't want to come anywhere near you either. <laughs> What are you doing tonight? See, I just think if you could have anything you wanted, then you'd want to go back to Frankie. Yeah, but I'd also want to be six foot two and have a million pound in a bank. Some things just ain't going to happen, love, are they? Because of me. No, not at all. Because of me. Let's get that clear, if nothing else. There's only one person to blame for this mess, Leanne, and that is me, love. I was happy with Frankie, but I blew it. So what do I do? Crawl away and spend the rest of my life feeling sorry for myself. I could do, couldn't I? Because no one else is going to feel sorry for me, love, are they? They're probably laughing their heads off, most of them. Or do I go, OK, Dan, that's it, it's gone. It's unfortunate, but it's gone. Time to start again. Yeah, well, I suppose I'd say the same with Jamie giving me the elbow. Well, then why don't we start again together? <laughs> oh, dead romantic, that. We can't have who we really want, so we have to settle for one another. Well, do you really want Jamie? Eh? Hey? Is that what you want? Because you know he doesn't want you and never will. It's like me with Frank, innit? I know now, don't I? I didn't yesterday, but I do now. She's never going to want me, love. That is it. Finished. So, it's not second best, is it? In fact, it's the very best. The very, very best there is. How old are you? Forty-five. How old are you? Twenty-four. Well, that sounds all right to me. But do you love me? And I'm not talking about when we're in bed. Do you love me? Do you want me to love you? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I do, yeah. Then I will. We'll care for one another. We will look after one another and we will love one another. Deal? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> I suppose it's partly my fault for going round to his flat. Don't say that. No, but what I mean is, he weren't flaunting her. You know, he weren't exactly rubbing my nose in it. And he did come round this morning to apologise, sort of, except I didn't give him the chance. The best thing that can happen is if he moves away. Him and Leanne. They move away and we never have to see either of them ever again. Yes, by the way. You look fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Absolute knockout, love. <sighs> right then. Let's give him something to talk about, shall we? No need to hold me hand, you know. But I, I just want to make sure you know what you're doing. I'm just stuffing papers through letterboxes. It's hardly something I need to read a manual on. Yes, well, I'd be happy if you go gently on the stuffing. We don't want folks ringing up, complaining they've got rips and tears in their evening paper. What if I knock on the door, hand them the paper, and give them a salute, eh? Oh, I see. I see. I know your sort. I've worked with surly paper lads before. You just remember you're on a week's trial. Now, go on. If anyone says anything, we just walk out. Uh, no. If anybody says anything, we stand our ground and we'll give as good as we can. Right, I'm here. Who wants serving? Oh, no one at the moment. I think it's going to be a quiet night. Oh, I hope so. I spent all morning traipsing around the market, trying to find some elasticated stockings. <laughs> Are you trying to break a world record? What? I've hardly had time to touch mine. Oh, yeah, well, I'm in training, aren't I? I mean, now that you start getting legless of a night, I don't want to be left behind. Ha, ha. I don't stand a chance, do I? Not with you and my mum setting the pace. It was one night. Cheeky. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. It's your night in shining armour. Just wanted to check to see if you were okay after last night. Tracy said that you took me home. I'm sorry, I can't remember. That's nothing to remember, really. I'm gonna go to the loo. It's embarrassing, really. I don't normally get drunk. Well, it happens to us all. 
Yeah, I just wanted to check to see if you were fine. Yeah. Bit of a late this morning, but, uh, yeah, fine. Thanks. See you, Nuzin. I know, I know. Yes. Hello. Uh, ben, can I have a rum and coke, please, and a vodka and tonic? Large ones. Right. Yeah, very large ones. Since this, this Vernon appeared on the scene, you have not been with me in any sense of the word. You're no good to me like this, Liz. You're sacked. Can't be easy for her, though, can you? Well, I can see it's not easy for you, either. Right. So you'd sit here all comfortable, would you, if it was Jamie stood there instead of Frankie? Well, I wouldn't be crying into my drink. That's like we said. We've got as much right to be here as they have. Besides... We had our relationship for months and I'm fed up of hiding away. Yeah. Come on. What are you staring at, Frank? Nothing. Let's just go. What? Jamie. They coming together. I want to go. I was just waiting for you. I just wandered in here, showing it off. Please, let's go, please. I might have known he'd be here and all. Don't tell me you stood with her. Yeah. This is like picking a scab. I'm going. Come with me. He doesn't care about our feelings, does he? He don't give a damn. You're right. No, this was a mistake. It was your idea, Lee. Yeah. Well, it turns out I'm not as hard faced as I thought I was. Oh. This is mad. I'm gonna have to say something to him. I'm not standing here looking at them. It's our pub, Frank. I don't give a damn about whose pub it is. My husband is in here with his tart, and I don't want to watch him, all right? They're going to be everywhere we go, aren't they? Wherever we go. I'm not going to be able to forget this, not for one second. I can't live like this. Jamie, come on, let's go together, please. Now. All right, come on. All right, Frank, Jay, um, can I get you a drink? You've got a nerve. Come on. Look, I want this to be as painless as possible for all of us. You mean for you and Leanne? Come on, Jamie, please. No, no, I don't. I mean, for all four of us. We didn't just come in here, you know. We did think about it. Oh, that's bigger, yeah? I don't want to drive you away, son, do I? Well, you should have thought about that months ago, shouldn't you? Well, look, we'll go, OK? Just to prove you we're not rubbing your nose in it, all right? No, don't bother. You don't mean anything to me, either of you. You don't mean that. I do. You can rot for all I care. Right. So why did you have Leanne round your house earlier on, then? Was that to warn her off me, then? What was it you said, Joe? Honey. Oh, yeah. That I would use Leanne, then leave her a pathetic wreck like Frankie and Carol. I'm going. You could have just had the drink, couldn't you? you see me? A pathetic wreck? I didn't mean it like that. Someone needed to warn her. What, that she'd end up like me? No, it's a... You know what he's like. I'm not a wreck. If I was, whose fault is it, eh? Let's yeah, just have a drink. Have another pint and a, and a spritzer. You had that little slut in my house. It weren't for long. After everything she's done? I was worried, OK? I know how much you hate her. Hate? Hate doesn't begin to describe what I feel about her. I wanted her to know what he's like that he's going to destroy her. She destroyed me. No, she did, and he did. How could you betray me like this? How could you care about her after everything that's happened? I can't just switch off how I feel. Oh, but you expect me to? You expect me to stand here with them sat over there? How could you do this to me? I haven't done anything to you, Frank. I thought you were the one person, the only one left who cared about my feelings about me. I do care. No, you don't. You think I'm a pathetic wreck? Keith! Hello. You all right? I'm fine. What are you doing with that slug over your shoulder? I'm delivering newspapers. All right, all right. Helping Rita out, are you? No, I'm helping myself out. Oh, I see. Well, 
Get you out of the house, I suppose. Keeps you healthy. And I'm not doing it for me ruddy health. I need the money. Keith. Oh. Look. That business with the suit, you know. I'm sorry I shouldn't have lied to you. Yeah, well. Have you got many more papers to deliver? Oh, I've just finished. Right, well then. I was just going to pop over to the Rovers for a drink. Uh, why don't you join me? I don't know. Oh, Keith, please, come on. Meet me halfway. Ah, well, go on, then. But I'm paying. Oh, of course. Oh. I was telling Deirdre she should come out one night and watch the rock rhythm rascals play. <laughs> Absolutely. The more groupies, the better. That's what I say. Uh -oh. I keep telling her she doesn't have to come to every gig that I do. It's only jealous because fellas keep asking me to dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are you going to try and get back in at the Weathy Arms? What's, uh, what's this? Oh, it's just the guy I work for. He gave me my cards today. What? Why? Oh, it's something and nothing. To be honest, he did me a favour, really. I was growing sick at sight of vanilla slices. <laughs> Mind you, I don't know what I'm going to do next. You know, I don't think I'm going to go back to bar work. Why not? Well, I like having my evenings free, and it means I get to spend time with Vernon, support him. <laughs> hey, you can always help me on the stall, you know. Stall? That's his sideline. He sells old LPs on market. Oh. Hey, I'd love to. Right. Oh, now, just give us a minute. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes. You really think so? You're not just saying that? No, no, I'm not. He seems very genuine. Oh, he is? And he treats me like a lady. No, I think he's really nice. I'm pleased for you, Liz. We're just going to sit here all night, are we? My grand's got a better social life than me. Get anyone a drink? Yeah, why not? I mean, he's not planning on whisking me anywhere special. It's been a dodgy month. I haven't had that much cash. A lager and uh, red wine, eh? Yeah, thanks. All oh, right, so you'll accept a drink off him, but you don't like him. I like him. He's a mate. But you don't trust him around women? Not with anyone who's vulnerable. Vulnerable? There's nothing vulnerable about any of the women around here. Desperate, pathetic, yeah. Very pathetic in some cases. I mean, look at Liz. Laying traps for a new man. She's deluded. Yeah, on that one must be if she thinks Steve's worth having. Makes you wonder what low life her husband was. Oh, and then we've got Bev, who'd wrap her legs round a man as quick as pour him a pint. What on cringing Claire? And a Wendy House life? It's not vulnerable, Nathan. It's roadkill. The only thing vulnerable about Frankie is her name. <laughs> she sounds like some sort of desperate stand-up comic. Made me a big talk, eh? Let's give as good as we get. We've got as much right to be there as them. I just had to get out of the pub. I ain't running away. Yeah, well... What? Nothing. Do you think it was too soon? Do you think that we should have waited a bit? I don't know. Fancy a takeaway? Bit of bolty? No, I'm not hungry, Ta. Well, I'm starving. I had a leaflet push through the door the other day. Yeah, well, they can keep the Rovers. I'll have to find some nice wine bar somewhere, eh? There you go. Do you like naan bread? Yeah. I should never let him get to me. Oh, we're a right pair, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> you got to remember, it's his fault. We can't stop blaming ourselves. Yeah, but that's your father. Oh! oh! You all right? Oh, oh, I slipped. I was, I was halfway down. I was coming down to see how you were, and I, and I slipped. I oh, think it's my leg. No, oh no, it's my ankle. Don't put any weight on it. Oh, sit down. Uh, sorry, I know you two wanted to talk. It's all right, you're finished. So, what happened? What did Leanne do? It doesn't matter. Do you think it's broke? Oh, no, it's probably just strained. Typical, eh? Sober as a judge and I still take a tumble. Hey, don't worry about me, I'll be fine. So go on, tell me, what did Leanne do? So, Charlie, do you, um, do you think the women around here are vulnerable? Tracy. Well, this lot. <sighs> No way. The only ones vulnerable around this place are the blokes. <laughs> I'm telling you, if the women rose up, we'd not stand a chance. Yeah, and I'd be leading them. Wouldn't surprise me. Why? What's this about? Well, Nathan feels sorry for Frankie. 
Fancy a date? No. Yeah. Just don't like seeing women getting hurt, that's all. Yeah. Sounds to me like you've been got, mate. <clears throat> Dad didn't walk out on your mother, did he, by any chance? That's got nothing to do with it. Thought so. You see, in my house, it was the other way around. It's me mum that did a runner. You don't like seeing women get hurt. I don't like seeing men get hurt. Just simple as that, is it? Yeah. You two should be together. Yeah, you reckon? What do you think, Charlie? What, and leave him to chase after Frankie Baldwin? I said I'm not interested in her. Good. Because I don't share men. Although I've got no objection to being shared myself. <laughs> right. I'm finished. Now I've still got this. Nah, I don't mean me drink. I'm finished here. With you. What? You're a pretty girl, yeah, but... You are an ugly person. I've had it with you. Did he just dump me? Feeling vulnerable. Hiya. I was just passing in there. Hi, right, come in. Answer your blue. Where'd you at the specialist? You've got plenty of time. I just thought we'd... You've been off work and that. Uh, it's just some magazines, you know. Oh, thanks, mate. Cheers. Yeah. There's a couple of DVDs and all. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them, so uh, keep them as long as you like, yeah? That's brilliant. Yeah, uh, the reason why I came round is... Um, well, I dumped Tracy. Well, I'll have Flame and Lou, yeah? I can't say I'm sorry, mate. I only wish I'd done it weeks ago. God knows what I saw in her in the first place. Nothing but trouble, that nutter. Tell me about it. I suppose we have got time for a quick brew. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. You tell that solicitor you want to take him to the cleaners, girl. That's all I'll say. And Danny's hardly rolling in it, though, is he? Otherwise, we wouldn't be living in this place. Oh, don't let that fool you, darling. He's probably got bits and pieces squirrelled away all over the place like a magpie. <sighs> That's a mixed what's it, innit? I don't know what to expect. A single man can lead a very simple life. Don't worry about that, love. Yeah, but you're not single anymore, are you? Oh, really? Trying to domesticate me, are you? Well, yeah. It'd be nice to get in a few essentials. Mm. And it'd be nice not eating with plastic forks. And I can make this place really nice for us. All right, fair enough. Right, look. <clears throat> I'll give you this. Now, I'm also going to give you the pin number, <laughs> so... I already know it. Of course, if I accidentally pass a cool shoe shop, I can't promise anything. Hmm? It's a very distant connection. Do you want to see the family tree again? We're cousins! And to the left for me. And to the front. Ashley. I could see somewhere. It was really faded, but, yeah, I could definitely see somewhere. Excellent. <laughs> oh. That's exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> nearly bit me head off when I had some petty cash for tea bag. Yeah, well, I don't care what problems he's got at home. He shouldn't be taking it out on us. Oh, talk of the devil. Been shopping? Yeah, I have. Got a problem with that? Oh, no. It's like some other pretty woman, isn't it? Yeah, and we all know what she did for a living. Are you? Zip it. Unless you want a fat lip, right? They're a bit cheap-looking, these. <laughs> it's funny. They seem to have got a taste for finer things. Oh, but it's a shame, cos these would suit you. Good, strong elastic, you'd have a better chance of keeping them on. What did you just say, then, Lady Penelope? Oh, forget it, Jan. The pathetic. Not that I'm making any judgments. I mean, I suppose it's a real moment for you, this, isn't it? Her sleeping with your boss. I suppose it's what passes for ambition for your kids on planet Battersby. You cheeky, stuck-up cow! Oh, Janice, forget it. Don't let them wind you up. I suppose I'm just going to have to get used to this. Oh, are you surprised after what you did? Er, uh, Mouth, whose side are you on? Uh, whose side? I used to like working in here, actually, believe it or not, until she set them to each other's throats. And I should come swanning in here like she owns place. Oh! Talk about a hypocrite. 
Do you know, if I remember correctly, the first time you clapped eyes on Danny Boy, you were all over him faster than Rick Waller on a Swiss roll. You're flaming jealous. Hey, hey, ladies. Come on, I didn't mean to start anything. You take that back. I will not. Oh, it looks like your little posse's falling apart, Janice. I've warned you. I'm not afraid of you, you little troll. You flaming ought to be. Yeah, well, go and shave your head again, you can go and audition for the next Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. Janice! Stop yes. it! Yes. Stop yes. it! Yes. Stop it! Yes. Stop it. Come oi, oi, oi! Desperate fishwives, what the hell's going on? What in the... I just popped in to see Danny. Get out. Oi, hold on a minute. I said get out. You've already lost the best things in your life, Sam. Don't throw away what you've got left on that. Um, Mum. I know that tone. It's just for a couple of hours. It's just, well, I could really do with some time to myself. Oh, go on, then. I must be mad. Is it all right if Craig comes around later? Yeah. No other films, though. Of course not. Right, that's me. Now, are you sure you're all right looking after Sophie? Yeah, she'll be upstairs all night listening to that rubbish. So, um, what time are you back? Who knows? We may be out till dawn dancing, might we, Kev? Hey, your carriage awaits, oh, madam. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> you're only going for a flipping pizza. Oh, well, that's what we've told you. See you, Sophie. Don't wait up. Bye, so. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 Look at him. He's laughing away with Popeye and olive oil. We should realise what a plank he was before. Is there anyone around here you like? Um, hmm. Well, one guy's starting to grow on me. It's not just you on me as your little revenge toy, is it? Maybe. Fair enough. <laughs> Tell me when this bit's finished. OK, you can look. <gasps> Pig! <laughs> that the chip runner? Yeah, I'll go and get him in a minute. I've got my own, thanks. You're not going out. Oh, and you're going to stop me, are you? Freak shop. Yeah, I am. Mum put me in charge. Oh, shut up and snug your bye, friend. You don't dress up like a little tart to get chips. So have you got planned? Forget it. So did my mum say I couldn't go out? She didn't have to. You know as well as I do. So she didn't say it then, did she? So I guess we'll never know then, will we? Sophie, this isn't funny. Get that muck off your face. Go and read a book or something. What Disney film are you living in? Sophie, I forbid you from going out that door. I don't know why I'm letting him get to me. You're not. You're thanking your lucky stars that it's her sat there and not you. <laughs> yeah. If ever a couple deserved each other. <laughs> what, the control freak and the bunny boiler? My money's on Barla. In fact, I almost feel sorry for Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Night losers. Oh, up yours, you demented cow. <laughs> 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 And what if Rosie and Craig hadn't found you, eh? Where have you been? Over the chipper. Liar. That's the first place we looked. Shut up, you snitch. Call in then. Yeah, and thank God they did. Have you got any idea how out of our minds we've been? Where were you? Kevin? What about them? They were watching a real, like, gory horror film. I'm 15. You're just a kid. Exactly. I should be exposed to that sort of stuff, should I? Hey, see, Nicolette said that could count as abuse. I don't care what Nicolette says. Mum, can I go for Craig's? Just for an hour or so. Yeah, of course you can, and thanks, both of you. You've not just ruined our night, you've ruined their night and all. Sorry I broke your snug in time. Right, you've got exactly two seconds to tell me what you was playing at. I went for a walk. I don't see what all the fuss is about. Oh, stupid little girl, anything oh. could have happened to you. You think you're so flaming grown up. Well, tell that to the pervert that grabs you and... You've been smoking. But we haven't. I haven't, Mum, honestly. I don't believe You're this. You're 11 years old and you've been wandering the streets at night smoking. It wasn't me, it was Nicolette. 
You never believe how I said. Don't talk bad. It's like I don't know who she is anymore. This is all down to Nicolette. She's the cousin from hell. What we're gonna do about it? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and see Nicolette's parents. We're gonna read them the riot act. They're scum, Kevin. You don't have to see their kid to see that. But I'll tell you one thing. We're not having our Sophie going the same way. Well, do you think they're gonna take any notice of us? They will when I've had done with them. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> My mum said I've always got to say that if I stay over at her friends. You credit to your parents. They'd have been proud of you last night. No change there, then. <laughs> Until the next time. You think there'll be one? Don't be so perky. <laughs> mm. Mm. To make you later than that, Sal. Why? Well, I want to have a wash, get some fresh gear. My fair balls, family. I wouldn't waste your swore finger. Look, I can't turn up in my filthy overalls, Sal. I've got to show a bit of respect. But I know they're my flesh and blood, and I know this sounds awful, but the Seddons are pure scum. Sal? Always have been, always will be. They've been more impressed by the tattoo of a Rottweiler than a suit and tie. I don't see why we have to go at all. You don't have to whine. You know why. Smoking, makeup, who knows what else. That Nicolette is too game for you. We're seeing her off. I ain't even done any of that stuff, though. Look, let's try and do this calmer, shall we? I shall be a picture of calm. You think I'm going to be dragged back down to their level? You don't realise how far I've come. Bye-bye, love. Mm, see ya. Tracy! What? Could you come in here a minute, please? What now? Oh, don't worry. Amy's fine. Your grand's taking her out. And there was me thinking you'd sold her. <laughs> Why didn't you call and tell us when you were coming home? Or at least that you weren't coming home. Oh, what time's this for getting in? It's not a hotel, you know. A million times! Like you care. Of course we do. And even if we didn't, we're sick and tired of being left holding the baby. Literally. Dad. She was asleep. She doesn't wake up. What's the problem? Oh, yeah, so who changed her nappy? Who got her breakfast ready? Who's taken her out? And who's not knowing if you were dead in a ditch when she asked where Mummy is? Well, clearly. I survived the night somehow. Where were you, anyway? The killer question. Well, it's hardly an outrageous intrusion. I mean, don't you think we're entitled to some consideration? Charlie's. Charlie Stoops. The very same. And I didn't get much sleep as it happened, so I'm going to get my head down if you finished your inquisition. You slept with, with Charlie Stubbs after everything that's happened. Are you mad or stupid? You know what he did to Shelley. Shelley is such a punch bag. She asked for it, whatever it was. Tracy, I'm speechless. So clearly a lie, if only. I mean, what on earth do you think you're doing with your life? I'm just trying to get over my unhappy childhood. Oh, I've told you it won't matter. Well, not too bad to me. I told you it was a nice house. Watch where you're stepping on this pavement. No fridges, no cars on bricks, no boarded up windows, or burning mattresses. Yeah, well, we've had some good fortune with a greyhound. Come on. Well, are you sure you've got it right about this lot? Oh, soaking behind your ears. So totally taken in by appearances, Kevin. It's what's inside that matters. And inside, they're rotten to the core because there's problems in here. Right, come on, let's get it over yeah, with. Gird your loins and don't breathe in too deeply. <laughs> Sally, so lovely to see you again. Ah. Kevin, I'm Paul Seddon. Come in. Do sit down, please. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll stand. You haven't changed a bit. You have. I see your nose has stopped running. Yeah. Why don't you take Sophie to your room? Do I have to? You're going to talk about us? We should be here. Go on. You can go on the internet, but ten minutes only, OK? Whatever. So, Paul, you've clearly gone up in the world since I last saw you. 
hardly have gone down. Education's been kind to me. What do you do? I'm a lecturer. We both are. Why? What in? Suzanne's a sociologist and I'm in design. Furniture, mainly. Oh, you were always interested in that. Was I? Yeah. I remember you pulling the horse hair out of our settee. But you set fire to it. When did you last see Paul? Not sure. But a rubber sheet got a lot of use. I expect you've grown out of that now, Paul. Right. Pleasantry's over with. We all know why we're here. Oh, yes, we do. We're not at all happy at the influence that Sophie's having on Nicolette. You are? I see you're doing much wrong at the time. Oh, must be the genes. <laughs> Blame me and Ray. An unholy collision. I'd never say that. We're in this together. <laughs> it's not as if we locked her in cupboards and beat her to a pulp. Perhaps that's where we went wrong. I can tell you, if we had locked her in a cupboard, she'd still be knocking to get out now. But we did our best. Shame it's just not good enough for Tracy. She's a very keen critic of our parenting skills. Well, I wish she was a bit more critical of her own. Yeah. <sighs> Do you know, sometimes I, I hate myself for the things I think. Yeah, well, like what? Well... I love Tracy. Of course I love her. I know you do. But she's... horrible. I'm afraid that's not the way we see it. <laughs> well, we're not making it up. We asked Sophie. She said she got the fags off Nicorette. Nicolette. What? She's called Nicolette, not Nicorette. Oh, whatever. Oh, that's another thing she's got off your daughter. What? Well, I can see where she gets it from now. Whatever. Well, everybody says that now. Uh, well, perhaps they do where you come from. And what is that supposed to mean? Uh, this actually raises another issue of concern for us. We've noticed that Nicolette's become a lot broader since she started hanging around with Sophie. Yes, she's become very e-bag gum. I'll have a red wine and two pints of wife beater, please. I suppose that's funny, is it? It is to me. All right, I'll have two pints of wreck the hoose juice. All right. Maybe we should return to first principles here. We're both satisfied that Sophie and Nicolette have established an unhealthy friendship. We can agree on that, can't we? Yeah, I suppose so. Perhaps we should also agree that we'll no longer facilitate the furthering of that friendship. <laughs> we'll stop them seeing each other? Yeah, OK. So we're agreed? No, we're not agreed. Sally? Well, they're saying it's all our Sophie and it's not. It's their little witch who's been leading our Sophie into who knows what. Well, what does it matter? We have a solution. Well, it matters to me. I'm not having these sandal-wearing fakes looking down on our daughter. She's worth ten of her. Clearly, we're going to defend our own children. Going off on one. You know what? I remember you when you had nothing. And now you're all eyes and graces and sounding your H's. And you're still a screeching, bleach-blonde harpy. Mother always said your side of the family was rough as sandpaper. Uh, what, us? Yes, you! I think we're finished here, aren't we? Sophie! Do you know, it might not be hanging off your nose anymore, but you're still a drip. What did I say? Scrapings from the bottom of our gene pool. Better without you. Now, get lost, you loser. Look at that. She spoke to you. <laughs> Got to be an improvement, mate. Right. Missed your mouth again. <laughs> Try that big thing underneath your nose. <laughs> oh, kids today, eh? Nowhere to go. No wonder they're all binge drinkers. I know one place they won't be. Uh, don't take that tone with me. They're not at mine, are they? I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. <laughs> you know, I don't trust you that much, and I reckon I could throw you a long way. The way you're going right now, you're about to find out. Uh, <clears throat> call me Kofi Annan, but Eileen, may I suggest you drink on to the other side at bar? No, she's all right where she is. We've called a truce. Right, I'm off into town. I will be back before one. Don't use all the milk. Oh, nice one. Oh, cheers, pal. Gotta keep in with you two. You're the only two clowns who's talking to me, it's real life. <laughs> hey, nice plan, Mum. Oh, yeah, working tops, eh? <laughs> Gone after anyway. Why? She's got Teddy's on her bed. What you've dropped her that easily? 
Why didn't you stop us from going round there then? I tried to, Mum. She's insane. No, I'm not. She has got a party, you know. Don't you start. I've had a right battering today. Mum, do you think Rosie will end up all la di da like the Sheddens because of her past school and wind up coming? That's not why she goes there. I reckon she will. This time next year, she'll be talking so posh we won't be able to understand what she's saying. That is so unlikely, darling. Uh, education isn't about social climbing, it's about learning things. Yeah, and nobody in this family will ever be posh. And to make sure that's understood, your dad's going off to chippy. Yeah, and when I get back, I expect everyone to eat the chips out the paper in front of the telly. And pickled eggs all round. Oh, uh, no <laughs> Spiffing it, real working class <laughs> tapper. Leanne, do you put this egg on last night, love? Because I've bent more spoons than Yuri Geller trying to crack this. Bit hard, is it? Oh, you're having a laugh. When it's finished, it's going out debt collecting. Well, I like mine hard boiled. <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me either? Well, for future reference, babe, I like mine runny, all right? Oh, is that how Frankie used to make it? Don't start. I like to dip me soldiers, you know what I mean? The SAS couldn't get into that egg. I gave up me Saturday morning lying to make that for you, you know. Yeah, all right, all right, don't go into one. I ain't thrilled about getting up early myself. You know, the Griffiths sort of needs sorting out, so I've got to get into work and... and... What? Danny, what is it? It's Frankie's solicitors, that's all. Oh, well. I suppose you knew it would come in. She said she was going to divorce you, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, she did. Not the sort of thing you pull someone's leg about, is it? No. Still, you've been here before, I suppose. Yeah. Weren't the same, though. That was just a formality. You know, a PS, not an end. This is a day's out, but look, a couple of the machines were playing up. Oh, really? Is that what the plebs told you? Or were they too busy putting bourbons in their cake hole to talk? Look at that. That ain't even going to cover the overtime bill, son. But it's my fault, is it? They're going to put that on your headstone. It isn't my fault. Do you know that? You're supposed to be watching the floor. All right, all right. That's enough. We've got bigger things to worry about. I don't think so, Michael. We yeah. could have stayed in bed for the amount of work that's been done here. The accounts don't balance. What? I've been checking the books. They don't tally. So what's the accountant said, then? Well, I haven't spoken to him yet. So what's happened? It's a dormant contract. Some of the checks haven't got into our account and... Uh, I think they could have been stolen. No, 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 hang on, hold tight a minute. I look after the Dolman account. That is mine. I pay the cheques into the bank on my own, all right? Yeah, but it's not your fault, I'm sure. Never mind whose fault it is. Those cheques are going somewhere and we've got to find out where. There's something not right here, you know. Ah, right. So, like when you lost that cheque and accused me of nicking it, and now, look at you, pointing the finger again. Nobody is pointing a finger. That's right, calm down, my son. Do what? I don't understand why you're getting so worked up, Danny, because... If you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to worry about, have you? I've got to go before I do something he regrets. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, my! Oh! Ow! 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 Oh! 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 Bugger it! Ah! Evening, Audrey. Frankie. Oh. oh, what's been going on? Well, I, I um, our dinner's going to be a bit late. I, I, I switched the the grill on instead of the oven. Oh. Uh, uh, do, do you fancy some wine? Uh, uh, I stuck it out to breathe. <laughs> Love a job. <laughs> no, leave the plastic on, babe. That's the best bit. Frankie never made ready meals, I suppose. Will you stop bringing up Frankie? Will you stop having a sly dig about me cooking and cleaning? I'm not. Here. I hope it chokes you. Well, it's been a rough day, you know. What with a divorce and then Mike. Mike? Yeah. I wanted to knock him spark out this morning. He's virtually accused me of pocketing company checks for myself. No, you? Of course I ain't. As if I'd screw my own business. You mad? Yeah, well, it's not your own business, is it? You own less than half of it. And Frankie will get half of that once the solicitors have done. Well, I knew I could rely on you to cheer me up. Thanks. And what's your point? Well, the last person you want to wallop is Mike. If he cuts you out of his will, you're going to be left with next to now, dancing to Frankie and Adam's tune. So, if I were you, I'd be extra nice to old man Baldwin and make sure he knows what a waste of space that Adam is. 
For someone who can't cook, you're a dev, ain't it, stirring? I'm just looking out for you, that's all. Is this your first go at pastry? Ah, you know it is. Does it show? Not at all. It's very nice. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Well, we're now to do with me, mind. I got it out today's paper. Some woman, I... Hey, listen. There's no need to be embarrassed just because you managed to knock up a decent pie. I'm not. Yes, you are. Do you know, being able to cook doesn't make you less of a man. I know you think I've got some funny ways, Audrey, that I'm a, a bit old-fashioned like. Well, you're a product of your generation, I suppose, like I am. But you don't have to be stuck in the past, you know. Don't I? No. Have you looked out that window? Have you looked at the television some nights? I'm proud of being behind the times. Oh, yeah, you're proud, all right. All that business with the suit, that were typical. Oh, well, yeah, that were a bit daft, huh? I'd have kicked myself black and blue if it had broke. I mean, if we... Well, what I mean... Oh, I'm no good at all that kind of talk. Yeah, well, that summit men of your generation have got going for them in my book. Well, just as long as you know how I feel... Um, well, you know... I know. I know, because uh, perhaps I feel that way myself. Hmm? Do you have to make such a racket, David? I'm trying to get the taste of that dinner out of my mouth. It was very good of Phil to cook for us, and the fish was lovely. Mm. I suppose I should be grateful it weren't deep-fried Mars bar. Actually, I'm a dab hand at that, and haggis. Sorry you didn't like it, David. You didn't have to clear your plate for me. You're joking, are you? I was starving. Still on. What is this film? Turns me stomach seeing people that age get together. They're not getting together, because he's letting stupid little irritations get in the way. Luckily, times have changed. You're blunt, stubborn, set in your ways. And you're never going to die of extravagance, are you? Huh? I don't know what I see in you. Could be. I'd like a word with you. Well, how about sweet dreams? Just come off the night shift. Sarah rolled home half an hour ago. Spent the night in your house. With your son. <laughs> well, nothing will have happened. I had Sean on sentry duty. Sean had to work in the pub. They had the run of the place. Congratulations. Jason wants his flaming head testing. Yeah, Sarah will need something else testing, jumping into bed with him. <laughs> uh, scooter? Todd? Yeah, we had her tested after Todd. Don't you worry. Thought it better under the circumstances. My son wrestled with being gay. He broke her heart. No doubt Jason will do the same. It's Violet who's heartbroken. I mean, lovely, beautiful, doesn't sleep around. Sarah never recovered from Todd, another product of your non-parenting. Oh, you mean Oxbridge Todd? Yeah, really messed up there. Come on, Gil, don't rise to it. How is Borstal David, by the way? Heard he was sent home drunk from school. I mean, that's when he's not telling coppers a pack of lies. David's been through the ringer. Yeah. And Sarah's been through half the lads in Weatherfield. And Todd's been through the other half. That's it. Come on. Do you know, I wouldn't mind if my Jason was gay. If it meant it kept him away from your leech of a daughter. What right Leave she? it. She's got no For right. For God's sake, woman. Come on, drop it. Just drop it. Well, I put both the dolman checks in the pain book and I left it in your entry. Yes, yeah, I know you did. Well, I ain't touched it. What about Sting? Six million quid siphoned off, didn't even notice it had gone. Why don't you go and squeeze a spot or something? He's as much a part of this firm as you are. All right, all right. Just wondered if you checked his junior saver account, see if there's been any big deposits lately, no? Eh? Danny, what good is a check made out to Underworld? Exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So why are you two looking at me funny? You know, it could be anyone. Any one of that lot could be ripping me off. Oh, the odd bog roll may be a real of cotton, but I ain't going to start robbing checks off you, Mike. 
Unless one of them's in cahoots with someone from Dolman's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my money's on Hales, because beneath that comedy barnet lurks the mind of a serial fraudster. Right, we're going to tighten up on security here. Yeah? Send out a message. I'll get across that. Skipped off to that overpriced salon like some giddy schoolgirl in yesterday's clothes. How do you know Audrey was wearing yesterday's clothes? Cos I clocked that lilac v-neck on my way to the bus stop and remember thinking it did her no favours. <laughs> oh, I think I'll give me hip some exercise. I think it'll be your tongue that's getting the exercise. And just wait till she hears about you and Charlie. You want me to do the honours? No. She'll worry herself to death. Oh, cos Shelley had a wobble at the altar. So when are you seeing him again? Whenever I fancy him. You're in the driving seat, are you? Aren't I always? Just don't underestimate him. I'm going to go and jump in the bath. Oh, that's right. You go and have a good soak. Your dad's taken Amy to playgroup, if you're interested. Good. I think the word is thank you. The word is chill. Stop your yakking! As of now, I'm stepping up on security. Oh, are we going to get a fit hunk on the door? <gasps> With epaulets. Oh, I love that word. Mm. So do I. I'm anti macasses <laughs> That's one of my faves. Shut up! <laughs> All right, Adam, tell them the drill. Right. We're going to start instituting bag checks in and out of the building. You are Bag checks? As of all bags will be checked. Well, do you think we're stealing from you, Mr Baldwin? Maybe. Some checks have gone missing out the office. So, I don't think it's any poxy checks. How much? It's not up for discussion. You think that one of us has been taking checks from the office? Not necessarily one of you, but one of us. Are you, Dad? So, dinner time, bags open, no excuses accepted. If you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to worry about. You heard the lad? Now get back with your work. Anyone would think this was a remote island, the prices you charge. Please feel free to take your custom elsewhere. You're handy, if nothing else. You're too kind. He's ethical and all. I mean, not everyone's got a car to get to supermarkets, have they? And they buy up sports fields and playing fields and turn them into massive car parks so they can make more and more profit. The green belt, right? Get ready to wave it tatty by. Thank you. Fair dues, though. Mm. My mum says you're astronomical. Oh. And what does she say when she washes your pillowcases? What? She means your hair dye. Oh, I think they go a bit purple after a while. I think she bleaches them. Very ethical. And has your granddad mastered the art of the washing machine? Or does Audrey do it all for him now? Now that they're at it like rabbits, you mean? <laughs> Charming. <laughs> I'll tell when you were asking. No need. Just passing the time of day. All right. <laughs> right. What can I get you? Don't know yet. Well, you're hard up. Totally skimp. Christmas plus my birthday. Double whammy. Mm. Well, you seem like a young man in need of game for ethical employment. What time do you finish school? Right, I'm up first. Enjoy your big moment, Adam. Phone. A business card, that's me, Danny Baldwin, part owner of this happy ship. Oh, that's terrible, that. It's all terrible. No, it's 20 to 6, that's what's terrible. Yeah, why don't you start searching in your own time and not ours? And, uh, oh, look, forgot. Company paper clip, I'll make it up to you, Dad. All right. So, wanna frisk me? Ooh, like you'd never know. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, I had. Took him right. I'm not gonna have him in my handbag, am I? Huh? There you go, son. Get yourself around a legs' is gaff. I'll bet you find a t shirt with stripes across it and a hold all marked swag. Well, that's not very helpful, Danny boy. Don't push it. Right, cropper. Show out of your handbag. Come on. How's Sarah? Sulking because I made her look after her daughter, but uh, never mind Sarah. What about you? Oh, right. My memory. Uh, that's not what you were wearing this morning, is it? Uh, when you left the Harris's place. I can't believe you just said that, Mother. It isn't lunch, no. Thought not. No, no flies on you, ma'am. This is old goss, this. She left his early doors wearing a purple jumper. Lilac. Now, well, Sean told me, well, you know what the gays are for tittle-tattle. They do not present for this smiling on you, son. Aye. Yes. Mm -hmm. She is. Well, congratulations, Mother. I'm a people watcher, an anthropologist. Yes, and sometimes you're just out and out nasty. 
Audrey. I'm so sorry. She can't help herself. Oh, dear, to forget it. Look, I have done nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, I'm the happiest I've been in years. Likewise. Oh, oh. Come on, Ailey, love. Mm. Quick. Oh, give it up. How's you got to pick your battles, darling? This ain't one of them. I'm getting ripped off. Left, right and centre here. No, you ain't. Not by me, you're not. In that case, open your handbag. I've shown you nothing but loyalty and professionalism. So you work here for nothing, do you? Next term. And you think you're above the law? What law? It's just some silly trumped-up rule. You're not the one that's ten grand out of pocket. Come on, Hilly. Everyone else has been checked. Bullied, you mean? Look, my factory, my trumped-up rules. My handbag, my property, my integrity. Oh, spare me the persecution <laughs> complex. No! You're a get off oh. me back! No! You get off my property! You're sacked! Night, Mr Baldwin. Night, night, Janice. See you tomorrow morning. No need to sound so compliant. You keep your big words to yourself, Martyr. Think about it, Hayley. Night, lads. See you tomorrow, bright and early. Hayley? Mr Baldwin, you're making a big mistake. One of us is. Well, what good did that do? Shows the workers who's boss. Yeah. And it ain't you. Some money is missing. I'm gonna find out who took it. Look, Michael, what are they gonna do with a cheque, eh? I mean, half of them ain't even got a bank account. I've been 40 years in the job. I know what I'm doing. Listen, it's a tiny flat. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense to me. This place was freedom from my family when I needed it. And now it'll be freedom from you. You can't carry two babies up and down those stairs. I can. You know, what you gonna do with the buggies? Leave them on the street? Yeah. Chained up if I have to. It's got one bedroom. So what? The kids can't sleep on their own. Not for the first few months, anyway. Yes, what you gonna do after that? I don't know. I'll figure that out later. You've got a beautiful house. You chose it. It's ideal for a family. But you live there, Dev, and you're not part of my family. Yes, I am. I don't want a husband like you. I love you. Oh, I know. More than you love those other women. I married you. Do you let me have the flat? No. In fact, you give me the flat. Or I'll stay in the pub, and we'll all live there. Um, Mike hasn't come home. Any idea where he is? Don't know, and I don't care. That's all I need, another nutter. Shut it. Do you think he's still in the factory? Could be. Well, if you see him... Mm -hmm. you... Oh, forget it. Been tarting yourself up? So what's it to you? Well, I find it amusing. Makes me laugh. Shall I get you a drink? I'll get me own, thanks. Oh, good. Back to normal, then. Look, Danny, I've had a bad night. I need something strong. Same old excuses, Carol. <sighs> you can't get served in here. I wouldn't have seen Desmond. Why not? It's black, isn't it? Uh, just about. It'd look all right in our sofa. It's just a school dance. It doesn't really matter what you're wearing. She wants to put a rose in hair. I'm talking infinity of gross. <laughs> hey, I hope you're not in a hurry. There's a bit of a sartorial debate going on here. Uh, no, I'm looking for Mike. Have you seen him? No. Oh, he should have been home hours ago. Oh, well, maybe he's there now. I hope so. Oh. So what time does it start? Eight, but if you get there before nine, you get laughed at. OK, I'll take these, please, love. It's not going to be any little kids there or anything. No, why are you in above? Um, I'm in a bit of a hurry. That's 3.50. And, and what music is it? I don't know. I'll find out. Right, well, if it's rubbish, I'm just going to take some downloads. 3.50? <laughs> put it in the till. All right! Hey, don't get shirty with me, young man. I feel sorry for you, Hayley. I really do. Look, if we don't stand up to Mr Baldwin, I'm not going to be the only one who gets a sack. I'm clinging to my job as it is. Danny Baldwin don't even like me. Of course he does. Everybody likes you. The management don't even like each other. Mike's at Danny's throat, Danny's at Adam's. That's not the way it used to be. All the more reason why you should support one another. I'm sorry. I can't. Hi, I'm home. Well, where have you been? Around the world. What, till this time? Yeah. Mike, it's half past eight. Is it? I have been worried. Is there any hot water? What? I think I might have a bath. Well, there's always hot water. OK. Well, where did you get to? Oh, the usual places. Well, like, where? Round and about, here and there. Is everything all right at the factory? Yeah, the factory's doing well. You know what? Little gold mine, that place. 
Well, Danny was in a bad mood. I thought you'd had a row. No, no. Everything's fine and dandy. Are you sure, Mike? Of course I'm sure. Things couldn't be better. Right. There you are, sir. Don't work too hard. What? Don't tell me you don't know. Know what? So you're telling me this uh, cheery happy act isn't an act? Uh, why? What's been happening? Where'd I start? Uh. It's all that war in the factory, Penny. Dad and Danny are at each other's throats. Well, what over this time? Dad says there's money gone missing from an account that Danny handles. And Mike suspects him? He suspects everybody. He's even been checking the girls' bags when they go home. But that's crazy. You can't... Try telling him that. He's already sacked Hilly because she wouldn't cooperate. What's all this, then? What's what? I'm taking a mug of tea upstairs. No law against that, is there? Well, you dinner suit. Don't worry, I won't spill on it. Come on. What's going on? How do you mean? Well, then, say you come in last night, you should have just got in now. The days when I were quizzed about my whereabouts have long since gone. The day I left school, to be precise. Now, if you'll excuse me, we have a shop to open in half an hour. Shift! Oh, I use you when you've got a minute, please, Shay. Two minutes. You look worried. Can't think why. Something happened. Well. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. Hey, Hayley, where have you been? I'm sorry. This morning. Where have I been? Yeah, don't try it on. It won't work. I'm not with you. The dross might sky, but the likes of you should set an example. Are you asking me why I wasn't away this morning? Well, what else would I be asking you? Well, you, you sacked me, remember, yesterday for refusing to have me bank checked. No, no. That's some kind of mistake. Well, you could have fooled me. Look, no, I remember what happened, you see. Uh, yeah, uh, Danny and I, we were deciding to do... Uh, well, what to do, rather, about these missing checks, and, uh, well, we were having a bit of a barney. You got caught in the crossfire. You see, Danny and I, we do have a go at each other now and then, and woe betide anyone that gets a stray bullet. So, what are you saying, that, that I've not been sacked? Well, why would I want to sack my best machinist? But you're adamant. No, 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 you've got the wrong end of the stick. But I tell you what, if you're not there this afternoon, there will be trouble. Right, well, whatever you say, Mr Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you later, then. Bye. <laughs> That Hayley, honest as the day is long, but she takes everything to heart. Glad we got that sorted out. Shelley, any chance of getting these drinks before Christmas? Uh, what are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here? Coming back to work. Yeah, but you've been sacked. Yeah, Mr Baldwin's apologised and reinstated me. What, so he said you did nothing wrong? Well, I didn't, did I? So why did he sack you in the first place? Misunderstand it. You can ask him if you don't believe me. I believe anything these days. Like right, troops, I'm nipping up the bank, all right? All right. Well, cash flow problems. Sorry? Nothing. You go, I'll be fine. No, no, what did you say? Just an expression. Do I look like I weigh six pounds and live off milk? What? Cos it's you that was born yesterday if you think I'm that stupid. Why are you getting so locked up? I'm sick and tired of your insinuations. Do you want to see think I'd cream off money from under Michael's nose? Well, you did it with hotel receipts. What hotel receipts? The receipts you charged to the company when you were with Leanne. Is that the best you can manage? Oh, it's true. Is it really? Yeah. And how many orders you want for this company, son? Is that you changing the subject by any chance? I am reminding you that if it weren't for me these last two years, there would be no Underworld, which also means there'd be no table in there for you to stick your great big size 12s under. Now, you accuse me fair and square or stick a sock in it. Otherwise, I'll take that silver spoon you was born with and shove it right back down your throat. Right, what's happening? I'm just passing the time of day and I get a mouthful of abuse. Ah, oh, he is good. Don't even bat an eyelid. You should take up poker. You'd earn a fortune. All right. What's your version of the event? Sorry, Michael. I ain't got time to play Who Killed Cop Robin. I've got more important things to do. Hello? Right, in there Sweet now. Come. Well, there's no danger of being bored. <laughs> <laughs> you never know who's going to sack next, do you? Oh, come on, Ailey. It's not like we could have gone on strike. Why not? It worked when Janice got sacked, didn't it? We all put our jobs on the line for her. Well, most of us did anyway. Yeah, well, that were different. Why? 
Well, we don't know what's going on with him, do we? You know, all feuding and all that. You mean you don't want to lose your job just before Christmas? Can you blame me? Yes, I can, because next time he wants to sack one of us without any reason, you'll know he won't stand up to him, won't he? What are you complaining about? You got your job back, didn't you? Yeah, no thanks to any of you lot. Anyway, at least I know who my friends are now. <sighs> I will not have management shouting the odds on the factory floor. Now, do you understand that? Are you going to be telling Danny the same thing? I'm not talking about Danny. I'm talking about you at this particular moment. One rule for me, another for him. Well, you know what, Dad? I've had enough. Hey, hey, where are you going? Back to Scotland. I thought it was part of your plan for the future. You are? Dragged in here like some naughty schoolboy. I feel more like a spare part every day. Adam, you are more than part of my plan. You are the future. Really? Yeah, but I can't just let you do what you want. You've got to have standards, right? Irrespective of who was right or wrong in there. You, you, you just can't behave like that. Danny started it. It doesn't matter who started it. You've got to rise above these sort of things. Especially as you'll be sitting in that chair one of these days. Well, if you put it like that. That's all I'm saying. Hi. Uh, can we have a word? Yeah, of course. We just finished. I saw that Fletcher order out. Oh, thank you, Adam. Well, well. What? That was the accountant. Oh, yeah. What do you want? Well, he's wondering why nine and a half grand hadn't been paid into the number three account. Oh, he picked it up as well, didn't he? Turns out the bank's got a computer problem. It's got snarled up in the system somewhere. And uh, they've also said they'll transfer it as soon as they can. <laughs> now will you believe me? Well, it would have been nice not to have felt accused, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sorry I got carried away about it, but uh, I was right. It was missing, wasn't it? <laughs> you thought I was losing me marbles, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, I'm going to go round the bank. I'll get it sorted out. Oh, thank you, Danny. Right then, sweetheart, what did you want? Um, it, it, it was about Christmas. Oh, come on, Rosie, it's nearly gone six o'clock. I'm coming. I hope she's not going to look out of place in that new dress. <laughs> Cost enough, didn't it? Yeah, well, it's not about the money, Ken. It's about the savoir-faire. I can't get that over at counter. There you are! What on earth have you done? I've just improved it a bit. Improved it? I couldn't go in like it was. It was too old-fashioned. Well, I wish you'd told me that before I spent all that money on it. What's that there? Mum, look what you've done now. What? You've torn it! Torn it? It's ripped to shreds already. It's ruined. I don't think anyone's going to notice that. Nobody will notice any of it, cos you're going nowhere dressed like that, young lady. Here's to the accountant. The, the accountant. accountant. I'll never call him boring again. Mm. Well, maybe we can get back to normal now. Yeah, let's hope so, eh? Can I just say, Danny, if I've said anything to inflame things, then I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. We all say things we shouldn't when we're out of sorts. I didn't exactly help, did I, having a go at you like that? Well, maybe I asked for it. Nah, don't worry. Forget it, shall we? Fine by me. Good. Shake on it? Oh, why not? Absolutely. Cheers. There you go. Cheers. Onward and upward, son, eh? Oh, that's a spirit. A top-up, Danny. Mm -hmm. No, thank you, Michael. I've got lots to do. See you all tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, right. See you, Danny. Take it Bye. easy. Well, why can't I go? Looking like that. What are the teachers going to think about me and Kevin, eh? Is that to do with you? You better go through, Craig. Oh, not you and all, Craig. I thought you'd have a bit more sense. They're not letting me go. What? Well, I'm surprised Keith's let you out the house like that. Has he seen that? Well, he's not really bothered what I look like. Oh, please, Mum. You are making a mockery of the school. And if I let you go, the staff are going to think I'm condoning that. That'll be Imogen. I'm going to look so stupid. Well, you should have thought about that before, shouldn't you? Is Rosie ready? Better go through. Wow. You look sensational. Yeah? Turn round. Chandler's going to die when he sees this. Who? Mr Chandler, head of art, he's organised tonight. He's always saying we're not bold enough. <laughs> He'll just love this. And his wife, you can bet she'll be in something outrageous. <laughs> and is this Craig? Yeah. Heard a lot about you. Yeah, all right, chill. Oliver's wearing his Homer Simpson bow tie and thinks he's the king of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till he sees you two. Anyway, should we go? Go on, Rosie, you don't want to keep Imogen waiting. 
Right, well, I'll just go and get my bag. <laughs> Great house. <laughs> it feels really lived in. I can see where Rosie gets her ideas from. So what does your dad do for a living, then? Right, you? um, this is where we go out. <laughs> see you, Mum. All right. Bye. Bye. See you. See you now. Be good. A sudden change of heart? Well, I like to think I'm big enough to admit to my mistakes. If Rosie's got creative genius, we should recognise it. Oh, is that what we call it now? Creative genius? No, Rosie is a real credit to us. We should be very proud of our achievements, Kevin. Now we can talk about Christmas, if you want. Yeah. So, what do you fancy doing? Fancy a big one this year. The whole family gathered round me. I hope you don't expect me to cook. I booked the clock a couple of months ago. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. Well, I thought it would be a nice surprise. We've all been through the mill this year. It's time we put it all behind us. Because you've been under a lot of stress. And that's not good for you. It'll be better from now on. We're back on track. We're going to build this empire back up to where it belongs. Yeah. So, here's to a happier future. A happier future? Yeah. Cheers. Then he comes out with his puke-making apology for Mike's benefit. Sanctimonious look on his boat. I could have knocked him in the middle of next week. Well, I hope you didn't. Of course I didn't. I'm shrewder than that. He had the old man eating out of his hand, though. Listen, I've already told you. Just be nice to them both and bide your time. For how much longer, Lee? Eh? How much longer, love? One's only just been toilet trained, the other one's in his dotage. They're gonna run that gaff into the ground if they carry on like Listen, that. Listen, just play along with it until it's time to strike. I can't afford to wait any longer. <laughs> well, what else are you gonna do? The only thing I can do. I'm gonna have to destroy the pair of them before they destroy what's mine. Christmas market. Yeah, and if we walk over it, it... Oh, Keith, my darling, no, I haven't got the shoes on for walking a lot. No, let's take a taxi. No, nonsense. Look, I, I can lend you a pair of my galoshes. Uh, what size foot are Keith, you? Keith, we'll take a cab. I refuse to walk around Salford in a pair of your gum boots. Honestly. <sighs> now, if you'll just excuse me, I'm going to powder me nose. I had this dream last night, right? We were back at the school dance and... They brought all this boar's head on a plate. Which boar? Miss Bert, the drama teacher. <laughs> she is so boring. And there was blood coming off it, but the head was still alive. It was like semi squealing. You have mad dreams. And you were there. You were grabbing the head and trying to put it back on the boar's body. Boar's like pigs, yeah? Yeah. Only as you were doing it, you kicked out with one of your teachers, and they died. And then the Rosses came and took you away. I don't want to lose you, Rosie. Oh, as if that's going to happen. Unless they introduce the law where it's illegal to dye your hair black. <laughs> if you disappeared, I don't know what I'd do. Disappear? I'm not going to Yeah, but everyone I love, that's what happens. Everyone you... Does that mean Wait, you... No, no, uh, it, it, it's coming out wrong. It was just a dream. It's messing with my head. I don't mind if you do. No. I'd quite like it. All right. I'll put dead babies on. Actually, this sound system isn't as good as the one in my room. Shall we, um, go up? I mean, we don't have to, no. like, if you... You're right. It's boring down here anyway. It's dead mainstream. They'll be drinking coffee now. But they always have coffee after a meal. I wonder what they're talking about. What's that? Cheese on toast with Worcester sauce. Did she make you that? Would that be Gail? No, amazingly, I made it myself. So you have? What, breakfast, dinner, tea and now supper? Yeah. Not every day, no. So Bethany gets a crib and you get some supper? Well, I mean, there's been some right changes around here. David, I did ask if you wanted anything. I just got the silent treatment. Oh, I don't want anything. I don't want to be a fat pig. David! I didn't say you were fat, did I? No, you didn't. Mind you, how much do you weigh? David! David. Oh, 
There's an echo. We need to talk about Christmas. What, does Santa Claus not exist? Your mum asked me if I'd like to come round on Christmas Day. Do you? Well, I thought I'd see how you feel. Why? Because I've got manners. Oh, I've got manners, mate. Just it's me day off. So, what do you ring? You do what you want, you usually do. Oh, God, that is vile. No wonder my Jamie hated Christmas with you all those years. You call that a treat? My perfect Christmas, right, OK. Oh. I won't wake up until about dinner time, yeah. where I'd find you at the end of my bed wearing now but a smile and carrying me a big tray full of breakfast. Right. Soggy kippers? Oh, no, full English. Swimming in brown sauce. Mm. Oh, and a big mug of tea where the bag's been there since August. Mm. And crumpets. Oh, I love crumpets. Yeah, you can't beat a bit of Christmas crumpet, can you? <laughs> Dripping in butter. And then all the butter dribbles all the way down your chin. Oh, you naughty girl. You're going to give me heart attack <laughs> one of these days. Surely they should be dripping in Marge. And then you propose to me. <laughs> well... <laughs> Your friends. Yeah, right. Well, you will give me heart attack. You keep saying things like that, doll. <laughs> Hello. Bit quiet in here tonight, isn't it? <laughs> the clothes, Mike. It's Sunday. Oh, is that the time already? Anyway, Danny, it's you I want to see, actually. Hello, Toya. Leanne. Uh, what are you doing Christmas Day? Opening that little present. Another floozy rained into the bosom of the family, eh? No. <laughs> Listen, your mother's coming. She's just been on the blower. Booked a table at the clock. Adam and Penny are coming. I just wondered if you wanted to join us. What, just me, or...? No, the pair of you, you and uh, Leanne. Oh. Oh, well... Well done, Mike. You should be on stage with that one. Mr Memory. We'll do a rain check on that, thanks, Boris. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Oh, that'd be tough. Of course we'll be there. Can't miss me old girl at Christmas, can I? Why? When am I going to get a chance to open all my presents? Well, we'll just have to get up there just a little bit early, won't we? Come on, then. I'll uh, walk you out. I had no idea that was a time, you know. Oh, look at that. The watch has stopped. Well, I never. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, why don't you stay the night? I mean, your mum thinks you're imaging. She's not going to know any different, is she? I want tonight to end. Hello? Hi, Mum. Oh, hello, love. Are you having a nice time? Hey, what did you want to eat? Oh, um, I had... Grilled halloumi cheese and roast vegetables. It was gorgeous. Have you rung for a taxi? Wondering if I could stop here the night. There's a spare bedroom with its own ensuite bathroom. Everything. And a nighting stuff from Imogen. I can put her mum on if you want. I said she might be a bit funny about it. You can get ahead around that. Well, she's just gone down to the field to check if the ponies are okay. Oh, well, there's there's no need to. What's going on? Rosie wants to stay over at Imogen's. Lord, Keith, it were ice cold. <laughs> He must be in bed. Oh, good. Because I don't want him seeing me tiptoeing about like some naughty schoolgirl. <laughs> Night, lad. Yeah. Night. without anyone seeing me. And then where do I go? They won't expect me back till at least ten. Well, sorry, don't go. Just stop here with me. <laughs> Did you hear that? He's awake. Are we going to twiddle our thumbs so these are dry or what? Excuse me. I've got paperwork to do. Hey, do you mind if I pop off for an hour? Depends where you're going. Well, I'm going to do some Christmas shopping and that. Good idea. Well, you do mind while you're at it. Gets a bottle of perfume for Tracy, will you? Ah, she must be the one then, is she? She's one of the ones. What? Well, it's a bit tight, mate. I've only been seeing her a couple of weeks. No point going over the top, is it? Yeah, I know, and I've only been seeing Sarah a couple of weeks, but I'm still going to get something nice. <clears throat> there. Get her an expensive bottle of perfume.
can't go around the front. My dad might see me. Rosie. Come. What's going on? What's she doing here? Did she... Did she stay the night? Did she? Right, you, off home. And you, sit down. Time I got going as well. Why is she going out the back door? I'll, I'll see you later, Keith. I said, sit down. Don't you ever, ever talk back to me again in front of Mrs. Roberts. I don't see what the big deal is. You what? Well, it doesn't seem very fair. You can have your girlfriend stop the night, but I can't. That's completely different, and you know it. Why? Because. Because it is. Now, get your feet off that table. Do as I say, not as I do, is that it? You're 15! So? I expect you to show me, to show this house some respect. Grandad, we've been seeing each other 18 months. We love each other and we're totally into each other. I'm not disputing that. We waited until both of us were ready. I don't care. I don't want this happening under this roof, under my nose, and not with a lass from across the street. So that's why you're angry, because she lives across the street. It's asking for trouble. So I should take up with someone who lives miles away, is that it? Well, your mates at school, do they have their girlfriends stop the night? Do their parents not mind? You're not my parent. Well, I'm responsible for your well-being. Well, I can look after myself. Well, suppose she gets into trouble. We're not stupid. We took precautions. Yeah, but I know what kids are like. If you get into trouble, if something happens to you, the book stops with me. I've not taken up with a gang of druggies, Grandad. We're in love. What me and Rosie feel for each other is just as valid as anything you and Audrey have got going. I'm not saying it's not. I just... Oh, there's no use talking to you, so why bother? <laughs> you were a long time at the corner shop. You only went for milk. Yeah, um... I bumped into Charlie and he uh, asked me if I wanted a coffee. It's no big deal, is it? Why are you having coffee with the local builder? Uh, Gran will be about five minutes. If it's the guttering, there's no need shelling out for a builder. Ken can fix it, if he can get himself up off his backside. Gran, just leave us alone, will you? Oh. Right. Uh, you'll have to take Amy. We're off into town. Well, why can't you take her with you? There's only five days of shopping left for Christmas. It's mayhem down there. Yes, and she'll love it. She'll love the lights and all that. We've got enough to do without getting a toddler under our feet. Do you see that? Leave the house for five flaming minutes. We send out a search party. <laughs> well, it definitely needs doing, I'm telling you. Sarah, would you take over Mrs. Hankinson's hair? Yeah, sure. Uh, just for two minutes. OK. I just came in to tell you I'm sorry that you had to leave the house this morning without so much as a cup of tea inside oh, you. No, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, I can see you're busy, so... Uh... No, 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 she'll be all right for a minute. So, how'd you get on with Craig? Well, I shouldn't have to deal with this at my age. I'm his granddad, not his dad. I know. I should be sending him postal orders for his birthday, not trying to quash his animal urges. <laughs> did you put him straight? <laughs> Fat lot of good it did. Do you know, I think it's our fault, Keith. Us? Well, yes. Look, me stopping over. We set a bad example. He's a randy 15-year-old. He don't need no encouragement from us. Well, we should have been more careful. Besides, it's not the end of the world, is it? I mean, they're only doing what kids do. What? Well, it's the truth. Keith, can... My Sarah's got a five-year-old daughter because of that attitude. Yeah, I know. But what more can I do? Well, I think you should tell Rose's mum and dad for a start. I mean, that'll certainly put a stop to it. Well, my love. Hiya. You look nice. So go on, how was it? Oh, it was okay. Okay? A sleepover at Imogen Dooley's house, and all you can say it was okay. Did they like you? I think so. Do you think they'll get invited back? 
I don't know. Do you want to show me chips? No, no thanks. No, I suppose chips are a bit of a come down after a night at Dooley Manor. So go on then. What do you all get up to? Our Tracy starts courting Charlie Stubbs, and I'm the last to know, as per usual. We didn't really want to admit the awful truth to ourselves. Besides, we're hoping it's a flash in the pan. It'll be over before it gets started. I think they'll make quite a nice couple, actually. Mother, the man's a monster. They never go short of a bob or two, builders. We've been sick with worry. I'm sure that our Tracy can handle herself better than that fruit bat who's meant to run the Rovers. Shelley is a lovely girl. She's as weak as that tea. Put another bag in. What do you reckon? Yeah, very nice. Who's it for? You. <laughs> what are you showing it him now for? Well, if he doesn't like it, I won't bother wrapping it. I'll change it for one he does like. Won't that spoil the surprise? Better that than to be sat there all Christmas Day with a load of stuff you don't want, knowing you'll have to wait days before you can swap it. I want a cab into town. Customer coming out, lad's gone into town. Glad you've come in. Oh, yeah? What are you after? Well, you know our Christmas Day lands on a Sunday this year. Tricky, I know, because Sunday is the day I have Amy, but I thought if I talk to you, you'll be reasonable. Forget it, Steve. Amy's spending Christmas Day with me this year. Fair enough. Oh, except you have to let me see her because it's law. I know. No, the law says you can see her one day a week. You can see her on Monday. Oh, I want to see her on Sunday. Tough. Uh, hey, hey, I don't want you going anywhere near Charlie Stubbs with her. What? There are a lot of people around here that think he's bad news. I'm one of them. And this is coming from a man who goes out with a gangster's mall, is it? I don't want him anywhere near her. Steve, I see who I want, when I want. I don't need your permission. As a third party with no emotional involvement, I'd say you blew that. Rosie! Rosie! I've been drinking you all morning. I switched my phone off. Are you avoiding me? Yes. I need time to think. About us? Yeah. I see. Besides, if my mum was there and answered, I'd go all weird and she'd rumble us. The minute I saw her today, I thought she knows. How would she know? Because she's my mum, she can read minds. <sighs> I think we should just be honest about everything. Are you mad? Well, we've done nothing to be ashamed of. I don't want mum and dad to know. They'd go absolutely ballistic. Why do you care what people think? I care about what my mum and dad will think. I care about what they'll do to me. I won't let them do anything to you. I don't want them to know, Craig. Can't you just accept that? Come here. I don't. Somebody might see us. Do you wish it hadn't happened? This morning or last night? Last night. I'm glad we did it. I'm glad it was with you. Do you want it to happen again? I'm just scared of my mum finding out. Who does he think he is telling me who I can go out with? Why's he got it in for me? <clears throat> I've seen a load of people around here who believe Shelley's lied. Well, he feels threatened. I'll be threatened when I see him. Oh, it's the same with any bloke that comes near me. Sorry to interrupt. Do you like this? Yeah, I know I do as it happens. Good. Thank you. Still think you should let him see Amy? It means me and you can have some time together. Yeah. But him not seeing her will really, really hurt him. And what's most important to you? Um, hurting Steve? An unexpected surprise. That's what I said when I walked through the front door today. Or should I say, waded through the front door? No. Burst pipe in the flat upstairs, whole ceilings come down. Oh, no, Phil, give me a coat. Six days until Christmas, and my flat's like the wreck of the Titanic. But well, did you manage to salvage anything? I mean, what about all your stuff? Luckily, my academic stuff's at the university. <laughs> but the water's even seeped into all the wardrobes and cupboards. The only dry clothes I have are the ones I have on. I take it you insured. No, oh, I. But until the ceiling dries out, they can't replaster. It's bad enough living downstairs from a heavy metal fan, but there's a great gaping hole in the ceiling. I'm <laughs> sorry. I shouldn't laugh. I did. Then I cried. 
ran the whole gamut of emotions, self-pity, rage, before finally settling on desperation. What are you going to do? Move in with a heavy metal fan. Pray that some kind soul takes pity on me. Oh, well, of course, if you need to stay here the night. Might be a bit longer than that, actually, Gail. I wish you wouldn't badmouth me, mate. I've done nothing to you. Just looking out for me daughter, that's all. What an honour. Threat to uh, me in some way, am I? The truth is, you just don't like anyone going near tracks, you do you? <laughs> you are joking. You're welcome to her, mate. Good, because she's the only one I'm interested in. And if you could get that through your thick skull, you might not have blown Christmas. Audrey's threatened to tell Rosie's mum and dad about you, too. Did you know that? I'm sorry about what happened this morning. Oh. I shouldn't have embarrassed you like that in front of Audrey. I was out of order. I won't do anything like that again. Come on through to the back, my love. I'll look for my purse. I was hoping I'd bump into you, actually. Why? Well, um, thought we could have a little chat. Here we go. Actually, I'm rather disappointed in you, Rosie. Thought you were a nice, sensible girl. How wrong can you be? She's still here, yeah. Oh, dear. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't be the only ones. Remember, I know what you and Craig have been up to. So I could shout it to the whole world. But I certainly think that your mum and dad should be told. Don't you? Who asked you to stick your nose in? Don't take that tone with me, Leda. I am making it my business because I think they've got a right to know. What right? Because they're your parents, Rosa. So what? Oh, so what? Oh, just listen, right? Now you stop sleeping with Craig or I will tell them. They'll go mad. They'll kill me. You'll have blood on your hands. Oh, now that just makes you sound like a silly little girl, but you are, actually. I'm not. I love Craig and he loves me. Oh, Rosie, this is for your own good. Somebody's got to put an end to this. I know what I'm doing. Do you? Oh, Rosie, you don't know you're born, my love. You're too young to be having sex. Like I'm going to listen to you. Yes, well, I know what I'm saying. It's the girls, not the fellas. It's the girls that get caught when things go badly. They're the ones that are left holding the baby. Sarah was different. Uh, no, I'm not talking about Sarah. I'm talking about me. You know, I was a single parent before I was 16 as well. Because you were a stupid slapper doesn't mean I'm going to be one. What? What did you say? Hello? What's your problem? Um, Carol singing. What are you doing here? I've uh, seen Audrey. Sally, there's... something I can do for you? Yeah, a favour. Could you fit me in later? Because one of the mums from Oak Hills invited me over for mince pies and mulled wine. Oh! All right, yeah, wash and finish. Uh, what about five o'clock, all right? Yeah, brilliant. Tea? You got to do a new washing now and all. She's too busy doing yours. What's in the bag? Job a lot of foot spas. Don't knock them. Ideal Christmas gift. This here is my worldly goods. Gail? I thought I'd move these into David's room when he's tidied up, make a bit of space. You moving him in? Well, for a few days. Temporary. Till his flat's dried out. Oh, did you spill a cup of tea? Batty upstairs neighbour left the bath running. For an hour. Place is a wash. And you've seen this, have you? Look on the bright side. I don't snore and I cook a mean Christmas dinner. Uh, large frappuccino and a double espresso to go. Please. Do I know you? Look, manners cost nothing, my lord. Please. Can you say that again in English? 
Are you being racist? She's being rudest. Please. No, the other thing. <gasps> Frap o chino. Yeah? And a double. Espresso. To like go. Look, we do coffee. Black or milky. One of each. Me dad'll pay, he'll be in later. I'll tell you what, the sooner this year's over, the better. I'm sorry. Don't be a misery. I'm really looking forward to Christmas for a change. Are you joking? No. Well, don't expect many laughs around us. Oh, thanks for the warning. You don't have to do that. Don't I? No. You come to a restaurant, me and you. Oh. What? No. That doesn't seem right. Mum, tear his arm off. Spare yourself the horror of dinner around ours. Frankie's gravy. But this is the first Christmas I've had with you for years. I'm not trying to break anything up. It's just a suggestion. It's a good one. Yeah. Don't be soft. It's only a meal. Go out and have some fun for a change. Listen, sweetheart, have you never heard of the phone? Well, you tip up out of the blue. I mean, I could be busy. I've got a packed schedule myself. My mate Savannah's putting slices in my hair tonight. All right, so how would you like if I buzzed in on that? I'd get her to give you a trim. Mm? This 70s footballer looking happening, you'd get a load more cred without it. Yeah, I've got cred in spades, right? But not enough to get your credit at the calf. Why else do you think I'm making tea? Mm? That blombie do we're giving it loads. Tell your dad what sauce for the goose. What, you, well, you, you told Vera Duckworth that I'm your father. I expect a more respect. But, who else you been talking to? <laughs> I saw this sign once. Please do not ask for credit as a punch in the mouth often offends. <laughs> well, good. You want to get one? It's none of her business. Who is she? She's a witness. That's who she is. To us? Well, she's doing it with our best interests. Whose side are you on? She's seen what happened with Sarah. Sarah Platt? She's comparing us to Sarah Platt? It's me she's thinking of. If Sarah Platt had two brain cells in her head, they'd rub together and start a fire. The cheek of it comparing us to her, I'm not having it. Don't, don't go marching around. Don't make it worse. There's more to it. She had a kid herself when she was just 16. Ha! Well, I suppose in those days. So it's all right for her to be the town bike, but we show a bit of intelligence and maturity. Just because they weren't capable, we're not either. Just my head in. She's forcing us to lie. Well, let's lie then. Well, they want us to be hypocrites. We'll be hypocrites. It doesn't change the way we feel about each other. caught him trying to break into a flat. I was looking through a window. After climbing three walls to get into the back garden. What flat? Where? We thought he was at football practice with his mates. Portland Street, ground floor. My flat? See, I told you. You can verify this, can you? Of course I can. Look. And you are? Philip Neal. Gail, who his mother and I are seeing well. He said he'd gone looking for you. Did he? Most people use their doorbell. David's not most people. I couldn't get an answer, so I tried round the back. That's when your neighbours saw him. Luckily, we were round the corner on another job. Oh, not a waste of time. We've got to check things out. Oh, yes, of course, and uh, we're glad of it, aren't we? Glad? Why? Right. We'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Try me on the mobile next time. I will. Shop? It's there. Dad! Listen, don't do... Choice. Dad! Well, life is full of surprises. Called? Amber. Nice name. God, you didn't get your dad's looks. And we're carrying the way you're going. Hmm? The verbal aggression, the give me, give me, give me, big attitude, and this time you'll end up, this is the ghost of Christmas future. That makes you Scrooge, right? <laughs> Kiss.
Keep the change, Amber. Put it towards a good therapist. One of your exes, yeah? She's seen the, the time. You must be worried. I've texted her. You're leaving it late to start walking. Walk? Why buy a dog and bark yourself? You lost me. You run a taxi firm. Sold it. Sold it? Man, that was a bad move. I'll pass that on to my accountant. You sold it for what? Spaghetti hoops? No, to buy a house for my babies. His latest babies. You can't play happy families with me, so you're playing it somewhere else. Only 14 years too late. Fine, you do that. Might be the making of you. But don't rub my nose in it. No, don't listen to me. I won't do anything Save to Save it you. for what? somebody who actually believes a word you say. We've had a lucky escape. Whoa. If that's what hormones do, you can keep them. No wonder you bailed on that one. That's not hormones. That's you. What? Work it out. You're not thick, no matter how much you pretend. She thought she was having my babies, my only babies. And then you come along. Yeah, but I... Yeah, but no, but nothing. She wanted security, right? a nice house, a loving father for her kids. And now she's going to bring up twins, single-handed, in a pokey flat above a shop. And you, you, my dirty little secret, start hanging around like a bad smell. Please, hon. Who really think that she was going to welcome you with, like, open arms? Hey? Well, they ain't got real crimes to investigate. What were you doing around there? Told you. I didn't even know you knew my address. Answer the question. I've told you. Phil was here. You knew that. That's why he went round. Case the try. Look, it were a dump that's not worth robbing. David! Well, you didn't go round to empty the dehumidifiers. That's it. You were checking up on him lying about the place being flooded. Oh, David. What have I ever done to you? Do you want a list? OK, so you don't trust me. No, it's me he doesn't trust. Do you? I'm looking out for you. David! Most mothers would be grateful. We're helping Phil out in a crisis. I'm not moving him in by the back door. Look, having him here makes me happy. It makes me feel safe. Is that such a bad thing? You did a daft thing for the right reasons. Tell me you'll think twice about it in the future. Yeah. Promise. Mum, I promise, yeah. Apologise to Phil. Sorry, Phil. Can I go now? There's half hour left of training. You shouldn't wander about in the dark. Since when? Not safe. I've been catching the bus for years. You never cared then. I didn't know you then. You don't know me now. You haven't asked me one question all the time I've been here. About my friends, my music, my mum. To a stranger, that's pure ignorant. To your daughter. I'm sorry, all right? I shouldn't have said that stuff back there. So let me give you a lift and we can talk then. Come on. Come on, we'll, we'll swing by a drive through I'll get you something to eat. My mum has food. Yeah, well, you had nothing but crisps all day. You don't need to talk. <sighs> I know all I need to know about you. You was AWOL all my life. You're AWOL now. You're near. She's got what she wants at Christmas. <laughs> my son to herself. I'll get him. Sorry. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Oh, I'm back. I know why they don't want me there. I've been so blind. What's up? Carol? Carol? How did he get my address? Don't know. He didn't leave it lying around. It's not in your address book. I can't remember. Don't think I wrote it down. Wasn't sure it was going to last. So he must have followed me home sometime. Or gone rummaging in my pockets. Oh, come on. Who else? 
Well, it was a stupid thing to do. I'm not excusing it. It's not normal behaviour, Gail. He's a teenage lad. And if he hadn't been stopped? Well, he'd have seen the state of the flat and come back home with soggy shoes and his tail between his legs. Maybe. Or maybe he'd had a good poke round, done some serious damage. No, he wouldn't. You think I'm being paranoid? Well, he's no criminal. He's a normal lad who's had an abnormal experience. It's made him overprotective. Worst ways to treat a mother? No, I think... I think every time he mentions the word Hellman, bingo, green light, doors open, birds tweet, and he does what the hell he likes. You of all people think that. That's how I see it. He knows which buttons to press, and you're quite happy to let him press them. You must let me read that dissertation sometime. You've obviously grasped the subject in real depth. Gail. For a man with no children and no idea. My head wasn't screwed on. I'd forget it. Here, you'll need this. Gail, I don't... No, it's OK. I've, um, I've got a spare in my desk. You sure about this? Oh, it's only a key. It's not like we're exchanging wedding rings. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. David's not going to like this. Tough. Hi. I wasn't expecting you back so early. Ah, just a quick drink. But you had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. All right. Did you have a nice time? He was worried about you, weren't you, son? <laughs> Tell me, I'm a grown woman. She's winding you up, Frank. Yeah. Well, is it all right if I go to bed? <laughs> What's he like? A night. Like... Sweet dreams. What the hell did you have to say that for? Just having a bit of fun, love. Yeah, at my expense. What are you making such a big deal of it for? I'm not. Oh, so she Just went out. Just leave it, will you? You're jealous. What are you talking about? Mum. Um, you're a bit of a slave driver, aren't you? I was going to let them go home when I'd done the wages, but... Oh, is there a problem? Yeah, Danny. Danny, yeah, that's your problem. What's he done now? Well, he taught me to give him a cash bonus, and uh, guess who's the one that got lumber to work it out? And he... Well, now it just won't add up. What do you mean? I took the right amount from the bank, and... Uh, well, now, now some of it's missing. You know, Adam should be doing this. Ah, yeah, well, he's at the King's Rose Christmas party. Yeah, I know, thanks for that. Oh, look, perhaps it's this thing, eh? Um, do you want me to give you a hand? Well, seeing as it's your fault Adam's not here. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a very good idea. And so we'll start with O oh, Come All Ye Faithful. It's a lovely man. He's been very kind to me since he joined the congregation. <laughs> Well, Jamie won't be there because he didn't want to leave Frankie alone. But all the rest will be there. It'll be a real family Christmas. Yeah, well, now we've done the wages, let's all get out of here. Yeah, and thank you very much for your help. Mm. I don't know what's wrong with that calculator. Well, it doesn't matter. It's all done now. All present and correct. Yeah. Mike? Hmm? Are you going to hand out the wage packets or not? Yeah, won't be a minute. <laughs> Mike, they're on the desk. I am going to miss you a lot, you know. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And good luck with everything. Thank you, Emily. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rita. You're OK. End of an era. I know. Listen. Why don't I give you to a lift home? 
Oh, no, honestly, we're fine. Are you sure? It's on my way. Well, if it's on your way It's not that important. Look, uh, you go on out and I'll uh, set the alarm. Okay. Oh, ah, oh, fantastic. Thanks a lot, Dad. Michael Schumacher wears one of those, but that doesn't mean you can drive that fast. Don't worry about that. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Here, open yours. Oh, OK. Right. Hey, you fasten this tight. Yeah, it took me all morning to do that. It did, the looks of it. Oh. Well, it's, um, it's very useful. Do you like it? It's a road atlas. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Well, don't you remember? What? We were looking for the hotel in Chester. We must have gone down this one-way street five times because you didn't have a road map. Yeah. I do remember. See, every car should have a road map. Do you know, it's the most thoughtful present I've ever had. <laughs> We've missed so many Christmases. You don't know how much this means to me. Yes, I do. Give your mum a kiss. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Frank. There's some tea left in the pot. I like myself. And then I thought we could open our presents. We've already done ours. So I see. I thought we could do them all together. Well, Jamie couldn't wait. You know what kids are like on Christmas morning. Hey, show Frankie your ring. Let's see. I've got him that. He says he'll never take it off. Very nice. Looks a bit loose, mind. Is it too big? You know, you can always get it made smaller. You don't need to drop off and get lost. Well, it won't drop off. It fits. So what did Jamie get you? Designer perfume. Very expensive. The gorgeous bottle and the stopper's real silver. Oh, yeah. Duty-free, was it? Will you two stop having a go? It's Christmas. Yeah, well, this is all new to me. I'm used to having a full house at Christmas. It's strange, just the three of us. Well, do you want us to go and leave you on your own? Is that what I said? No, but... Well, we were thinking of getting a place on our own as it happens. What? Well, we weren't thinking exactly. Yes, thinking. I suggested we get a place together and you said, yeah, let's think about it. Frankie's got to know at some time or another. You moving out? We haven't decided anything. We can't be under Frankie's feet forever. It was just a thought. Hello? Oh, it's you. What do you want? Yeah, I know it's Christmas. Is that your excuse for phoning, then? I'm not talking to him. She don't want to talk to you. Why? Because you left us. You ran off to Spain chasing your dream of being a cut price Galactico. Warren! Give me that phone. She does want to talk to you. <laughs> See you, mate. Warren, baby! <laughs> How are you? Ah, the uh, Baldwin reservation, please. Oh, yes, a party of six. Uh. Yeah, six. I can count. What's this, a maths test? Look, I know it's six. I made the reservation. I know you did. Uh, your table is ready. Uh, we'll have a drink at the bar first. Uh, we're not all here yet. Fine. Shall I my new watch? Very swish. Everything all right at work? I reckon why. Oh, no reason. Just wondering how you and Mike getting on. No worse than normal. Payne, have a sit down. I'll help with the drinks, so. yeah. This is nice, isn't it? Yeah. 
Hey, we've got something in common. Really? What? We're both going out with older blokes. I suppose so. Can I ask you a personal question? Well, you can ask. Well, I know that Danny's more or less the same age as my dad, but... He's really active, if you know what I mean. I think so. Well, he's just... Well, I was thinking, I mean, as they get older and we, like, come into our prime, can they... Well, what I'm saying is, I mean, you know, there must be a time when they can't keep up with pace anymore. Are you taking the... No, no, I'm just making conversation, that's all. Well, I think we should talk about something else. Oh, right. Don't look now, Danny, but isn't that your ex-wife over there? Huh? Mm. No, I can't. <laughs> Oh, no. Not for me, thanks. What are you doing here? <sighs> Eric, I'm sorry. This is my ex-husband, Danny. Danny, this is Eric. Oh, pleased to meet you. That's a bit awkward, isn't it? Still uh, just small world, bound to bump into your ex now and again. No offence, Eric, you're being used. She's only here because she knows me and my family are in. She's only interested in one thing, isn't she? And that's stirring it. Do me a favour, Danny. Go back to your little tart. Eric and I are looking forward to a quiet Christmas dinner and we would appreciate a little privacy. Watch her, Eric. Watch her like a hawk. Do you know what? I think I will have a glass of wine. Just a small one. Hey, go easy, if I were you. We haven't had the uh, Christmas consom with walnut and cranberry bread yet. Did I ask for your advice? We're trying to be helpful. OK, see you in a minute. Bye. Mike? Mike? Yeah, what? You were miles away then. That was Viv. She's just coming into Manchester. She'll be here any minute. Oh, good. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard you. Well, you might look a bit more pleased seeing your mum again. Don't tell me how I should look. Well, what's your problem? I ain't got a problem. You got anything on your chest, Danny? Now's a good time to get it off before Viv gets it. I haven't got anything on my chest. Except hair. Quite a lot of hair, actually. Thanks for correcting me, yeah. The only thing on my chest is hair. OK, well, give us a smile. It's Christmas. That's it, yeah? Ah, now, that wasn't so difficult, was it? He made my life a misery, he did. I was in a bad way, I can tell you. You wouldn't think it to look at me now, but I was on skid row. I've just realised, Leanne, you've slept with Mark, Jamie and now Danny. I'd leave it there if I were you. No, but that's three Baldwin men. A hat-trick. When's my turn? Oh, I reckon I could fit you in when hell freezes over. Well, that's not very nice, is it? I mean, you obviously have a preference for Baldwin men. In fact, you're pretty much a Baldwin groupie. Oi, Robert the Bruce, turn it in. Or we'll put you back on the lemonade till you're big enough to have a proper drink. Got it? You know, I can imagine you hanging outside the factory. Waiting for the next Baldwin man to come out. I mean it. It's all right. I can handle him. What is going on? I just realised, Dad, that Leanne... I slept with three Baldwin men. Leave me and you out of it. She's got the full set. Are you looking for a festive fist in the face? Are you? Because that's what you're going to get if you carry on, son. Brother, not son. I know it must be hard for you, my big Cockney brother. But try and keep up. Thinks he's such a hard man, your boyfriend. I've got a good mind to give you a slap in the face myself. Adam, why don't me and you nip outside and have a nice little chat, eh? All right, that's enough. Did you hear what he was saying? Yes, I did. You, no more wine. And keep your opinions to yourself. You, give him a bit of slack. You were young once yourself. And I remember what a cocky little git you were. So ease off on him, will you? Waiter, can we have some soup, please? We're getting a bit hungry here. Well done. I'm over it now. I can rise above the whole thing. I've got a new job. I've got a fantastic relationship with my son and a new man in my life. We're both moving forward. Ten years ago, I'd have walked over there and caused a terrible scene. Not anymore. Not anymore. I have my self-respect. Do you know what I have now? What? My self-respect, I just told oh, you. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my pride. Pride is very important. 
Don't let anyone pinch my handbag. I'm going to the little girl's room. Watch it, lovey. He'll have his hand up his skirt. Crawl off and die, Carol. And a Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> I mean it, love. Watch him. He'll have anything that's going, he will. Babysitters? His son's fiance? I wouldn't be surprised if he knocked off a couple of carol singers on the way over here. Have you got security here, love? Hey, cos I think we've got a drunk needs ejecting, OK? Why don't you just go back to your table, eh, Carol? Is she talking to me? Is the tart talking to me? Carol, not now, all right? Sort of right, Danny. Hey, she's got nothing to do with me. Let the restaurant boot her out. No one's gonna boot me out, Danny. I have as much right to be here as you have. My money is as good as yours. You haven't got any money, Carol. You're just sponging off your latest mug. You upset the other diners. We'll all be kicked out. Is this supposed to be a family do, Mike? <laughs> Ain't much of a family, is it? Do you know why? Cos Baldwin men can't keep their trousers on. I know you two. You're both as bad as each other. You don't deserve families, neither of you. You're the only decent person in this family. Not the only one. All right, me and you. And Warren? No, not Warren. <laughs> why not Warren? He's a lovely boy. Leanne. You don't have to answer it, you know. Please, madam, sit down. Yeah, sit down, you old lush. Hey, that'll do. Hey, be fair. He's right for once. Carol, just go home, eh? If you don't return to your table, I will be forced to call the police. Oh, is it illegal to have a conversation now? Don't pass the law when I wasn't looking. Carol, go back and crawl under your rock, love. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. OK, fine. Carry on, get arrested and spend the whole of Christmas in a police cell. What am I talking about? I don't care. If that is the best place for you, love. Oh, what are them two doing here? Oh, well, I called him. What did you do that for? So they could fetch you. Then why would you ring at my wife and son? Hey, don't have a go. I was on the train. Jamie, my lovely boy. What are you doing with number one tarts? Mum. That's my new name for you, Frankie. Do you like it? Come on, Carol. She is number two tart, but only because I don't know how many tarts have been in between. She could be 1,002 tart. That will give us a clue, Danny. Hey, hey, it's a good Christmas game. Guess the number of tarts in Danny's bed. Are you going to let this descend into a farce? Well, what can I do? Look at the three of us, Danny's girls. We could start a little pop group. Come on, let's go. Yeah, take her home. Drop her off in the nearest canal, eh? Give us all a break. Don't let him speak like that, Jamie. It's OK, Mum. He's not worth wasting breath on. None of them are. Having a nice Christmas, are you? Not really, love. What about you? Oh, you don't talk to her. Well, don't you stop. Oh, trouble in paradise. Oh, shut it. You know who I feel sorry for? Poor Uncle Mike. He wanted to take him for a special family Christmas do. And now he's found out what his family are really like. Selfish, sleazy and sick. Do you hear that? Selfish, sleazy and sick. I'll get the bill then. Do you want to come with us, mate? No, you look after her. Right. Right, let's go. Yeah, what are you staring at? Satisfied? OK, show's over. Carol's left the building. Well, what's been going on here? Have I missed the floor show? Hello, Mum. Um, this is my new girlfriend, Leanne. How you doing, Mum? All right? Oh, I've been better. It's not easy. Good to see you. Traffic was terrible. 
Well, you're lucky we nearly got kicked out. Now, come on, let's everyone make an effort, eh? No more fireworks, please. Let's just get on with the job of uh, having a good time, eh? Yeah, here, here. And we're glad you could make it. The more the matter. Where's Harry? Park in the car. Mike? Honey, we've been waiting ages to eat, and I know Harry likes his grub. Mike? What? What's everyone looking at me for? Is he up to something, is he, eh? Do you remember when he dressed up as Santa? He's not dressing up again, is he? What's he doing? Look, will you stop messing about, eh? Will someone tell me where Harry is, or do I have to go down to the car park and find out for myself? Mark, stop it! Is this supposed to be funny? Mike? Harry's dead. What? He's dead. Well, well when? Uh, how, how, how did it happen? When? He died six months ago, Michael. Sorry. I... Don't know what I was thinking. What, what's that? Merry Christmas. What is it? Now, hold me, but be very careful, because he's very delicate. Oh, Jack. It's Great Grandad Edward. Ah, the seventh, no less. Limited edition, finest bone china, hand painted by craftsmen. Jack, I'm overcome. Hey, where did you get it? Because I know how much these cost. No, Davira, you don't ask things like that at Christmas, do you? But the look on your face tells me that. All the sacrifices were worth it. Oh, Mike, you need help. You need to see a doctor. I'm fine. Well, at least come and get something to eat. Not hungry. Hey, what's going on? Everyone's asking. Oh, I just need a bit of air, that's all. You need more than that. Mum's really upset, you know. Yeah, well, I'm tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I, I've been planning this for weeks. Mike, it's not the first time he's forgotten things. Hey, don't talk about me as if I'm not here. I can hear all right. There's nothing wrong with my ears. I'm sorry. I'm going for a little walk, right? Clear my head. Oh, well, what do you want me to tell him? Tell him anything you like. Well, I'll come with you. No, no, you stay with Danny. I'm going for a walk. You keep everybody happy. I won't be long. But, Mike, I'm worried about you. We're all worried about you. Take it back to the table, will you? Ah, if they made Bucky win an Olympic sport by 2012, I could be a gold medalist, me. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, all right, go on, half a glass. And me? I, I don't think so. Oh, go on, let her have a spit. That way we can have a proper toast. All right, go on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, raise your glasses, please. I want to propose a toast to a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hey, and let's hope this coming New Year is a good one, especially for you, Craig. Thanks. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Cheers. Don't knock it back. It's wine. We only had little glasses. It's all right if we go out for a bit. Oh, where? Well, for a walk. We've been stuck inside all day. They want to be alone. I suppose so, but don't be long, though, cos you owe me a rematch at Kaplunk. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Are you all right? Do you want us to get someone? <laughs> He just keeps crying. Look, it's all right, I know what <laughs> Come on. Mike? What's the matter? I went for a walk. Couldn't find my way back to the restaurant. Couldn't find my way home. I think there's something wrong with me. I forgot. I forgot that my, my, my own brother was dead. And they, and they were all looking at me and I was looking back at them and I couldn't remember half their names. 
That's all right. We all forget things. No, no. It happens a lot. It, it gets worse and worse. I, I forget words. I lose things. And then in front of everybody, ooh, I, I'm, I'm scared. I think I'm losing my mind. Why don't I run you home? In a minute, there's no rush. <laughs> Something smells good. How do you sleep, then? That is one lumpy divan, darling. No need to ask how you slept. Snoring away like a warthog. Mm. Happy boxing day. Any tea in the pot? I don't know what fabric conditioner you use, Penny, but I've got a rash all around my middle. Since when have you taken your tea black and with no sugar? I'm a bit dehydrated this morning. Had too much of the juice last night. Mm. I can knock anything back. Oh, not enough to have forgotten what happened in the restaurant. Oh, sorry, can I just... Um... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. If I could do it all over again, I'd make sure that silly moo Carol didn't know where we were. She went and ruined everything. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Penny, Mike, sorry. <laughs> you forgot about your own brother's death. You forgot about Harry. You went for a walk to clear your head and you got lost. Jamie found you, confused, wandering around on a street that you've lived on for over 20 years. Is there any wonder I'm confused, surrounded by you lot? Rowing all the time, picking holes and everything. Him, behaving like a plonker. Adam, would you turn that off, please? Did you hear that, Viv? She reckons I'm losing the plot. Well, you did that years ago, darling. <laughs> He's all right, Penny. He's just stressed. <laughs> and if you're going to get all upset about it, then I'm afraid you're the one who's lost the plot, love. Not him. Now, Mike, have you gone potty? Or do you remember saying that you were going to take me to the sales today? Uh, no, I don't think he should be going... What is your problem, Penny? Well, come on in, shake a leg. Leave it any longer, those shops are going to be heaving. You know, Mike, oh. and the way he was going on at the clock... Golden Bennett. Was he drunk? <sighs> I've joked in the past about him losing his marbles, but I'll tell you, I think he finally has. What was he like? So, <clears throat> what, what are you saying exactly? Well, I guess I'm saying... Alzheimer's. What's that? She ain't there. Uh, hang on a minute, love. What do you mean she ain't there? I put her to bed myself. I don't believe this. Where is she? Sorry. Uh, um, hang on a minute. Warren, sweetheart, I'm gonna have to call you back in about five minutes. I'm sorry about that. It's just Sue Ellen's gonna walk about. All right, love. I love you too. Bye-bye. Where is she, Frank? Oh, oh, well, look, I don't reckon she's done nothing daft. She's probably just gone to sober up or something. Yeah, she's probably too embarrassed to face us this morning and gone for a walk or something. Let's not kid ourselves. She's probably off her face somewhere or lying in a gutter. Oh, look, she'll be all right. That's sort always are. Adam, I know you're only young, but I need you now more than ever to be a grown-up for me. I'm not a kid, Penny. I know you're not. But this is bloody important. Something very serious is happening to your dad. This is the beginning of something massive. Do you understand me? All that happened yesterday. He's forgetting everything. He's been forgetting things for months. Yesterday, he didn't know who he was or where he lived. He didn't recognise Coronation Street. I mean, that street's his life. What does that say to you? If you're going to cry, Adam, get it out the way now. <laughs> Try not to do it in front of him. I don't want to panic him. But he may get better. You know, I just can't forget that this bloke tried to get us both killed. Can you understand why that is kind of tarnishing my Boxing Day festivities? Why do you have to go and drag that up? What? The little insignificant matter of attempted murder? Well, I'm sorry, silly me. Oh, shut up. Do you know how infuriating you are? Oh, take a chill pill, Steve. I'm just trying to... Is it to any wonder he used to knock you up? Sorry. We should have something stronger. What's up, mate? Nothing. Oh, come on, you can tell me. I'm your dad. He's worried about you. Are you? A little bit, yeah. Oh, right. Now then, uh, why should you be worried about me? I just feel a bit weird. We've been talking. 
Oh, here we go. And we both agree that maybe you should see a doctor. I saw this beautiful cardi in St Anne Square. Well, actually, when I say it's a cardi, you know, you can actually wear it as a coat. Viv! I don't care what you have and haven't seen today. Oh, well, that's nice. And what have you seen, Penny, that makes you think that I need to see somebody, eh? Well, yesterday. Oh, talking behind me back, eh? I just think maybe you should take things easier at the factory. Oh, right. You know, I can help more. I'll do more. Oh, I see. This isn't about me, then, Adam. It's about you and the feud you got with your brother. I don't have a brother. Don't confuse him. I refuse to acknowledge Danny is my brother. Well, he is your brother, and you can't stand him. And you're using my stress state to play out your dirty little tricks on me. How low can you get? You've got her twisted round your little finger, haven't you? No, he has not. Danny is your brother, whether you like it or not. Well, you're not my mum, are you? Thank God. Right, apologise instantly. Oh, you two stick as thieves, ain't you? Look, we're getting off the subject here. Can we bring this round to the real issue, which isn't Adam and Danny, Mike? It's you. Oh, you don't half go on, darling. Yeah, well, someone's got to around here. Well, it's hardly surprising he's cracking up, is it, living with you? All of you, please! There is nothing wrong with me. What happened yesterday was a blip, a malfunction, uh... I don't know what happened. Maybe someone spiked my drink. But as God is my witness, it will never, ever happen again. I need your help. Why? What's happened? It's about Mike. What's he done now? Well, you were there. You must be as worried about him as I am. Yeah, I've been worried about you, that's for sure. Oi! I was watching that. Not now, you're not. Oh. Sit down, Pen. Um. I was wondering if uh, you talked to him. Me and Adam, we've tried to convince him to see a doctor. But he won't listen. He's not having any of it. Where is he now, then? He's taking your mum to the train station. All right. Hey, you happy about him giving lips to his exes? It's not losing him to another woman I'm worried about. I mean... I at first, I just thought it was the ageing process, you know? I mean, my memory's not what it used to be, either. But you don't forget your own brother's death, do you? Whatever it is, we need to know. I'll take that one. Certainly, sir. Well, it's a legal thing. It's when you sign over, like, um, control your assets to someone like your next of kin. Just in case you can't be trusted with him anymore. Hmm. No wonder Penny's sticking around then. No, I think she's genuine, because she's got plenty of her own dough already, isn't she? All oh, right. And do you really think she would have moved in with Mike if he'd been a bin man? Ah, oh, no. I see. Well, I'm not saying that she's a gold digger, oh. but if she was, and he really is ill, then the part at the end of the rainbow would seem a whole lot nearer, wouldn't it? Ah, 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 that is you chasing the rainbows, Lee. You've got to remember, Mike might last another ten years yet, and it ain't going to be any picnic looking after him, love. In fact, it's going to be very expensive. What? Everything he owns? Yes. The factory, the flat, his savings, the car, the place in Spain... Could all go on his care. You know what I mean? Anyway, Penny ain't even his next of kin yet, is she? Not unless, of course, they get married. Ah, oh, right. So it'll all be left to you and Adam, then? Mainly Adam right now, isn't it? Well, why not you? Because I don't officially exist yet, do I? I can't prove that I'm his son. I mean, Mike ain't on my birth certificate as my dad. I ain't even in his will. Look, just keep your hands off my husband, right? <laughs> well, I hope that was Jack's barber she was talking to. Hang on. Wh why aren't you in Mike's will? Uh, well, I don't know. He just ain't got round to changing it yet. Well, then, that's the first thing that you'll want to do. Otherwise, Adam and Penny will get everything. Shh, relax. I know what I'm doing. All right, the will's one thing I've got to get sorted out, but my first priority is get Mike in to see a doctor and get him to sign over the factory. Hey, and don't forget, he has got another son. Dan, are you listening to me? Um, yeah, of course I'm listening. Don't worry about Mark. He's, he's right out of the picture. I mean, he got disinherited years ago. Yeah, exactly. So, if it can happen once, it can happen again, can't it? What are you talking about? Right, you need to get yourself written into Mike's will, yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, if you craft it, keep Mike sweet, then maybe you could get the other two written out of it. And if he is ill and really losing his marbles, then maybe he could be made to disinherit Adam the way he disinherited Mark. 
There's no need to do any of that. You're forgetting Mike ain't that daft yet. Leave it with me. Let me just talk to him. He'll know what's right and then he'll do it. You're not getting your hands on my husband. If I say Henry VIII, you get a mental picture, don't you? What is it that you see? Well, it's you with the mental pictures, you ghoul. Look, love, I think you better take the hint. I've been on the receiving end of the Sunday Times art critic. A pint in the face is a rave review puppet. I'm raving now, give you a rave. Back in. off, Vera. Oh, genuine passion. Such a rare commodity these days. Now, let's just pause for breath and think about Henry VIII. King Henry VIII. What do you see in your mind's eye? Guillotine. No. What does he actually look like, Jack? A smile on her face and a bucket in his hand. Do you want what she's just dad? What did he look like? Someone describe Henry VIII to me. A big fat fellow with a beard. Thank you, darling. He lived 500 years ago. Before the goggle box, before photography, but we know exactly what he looked like because of Holbein's portrait. The Mona Lisa. If her husband had stopped her from sitting for Leonardo, we would never even have known that she existed. Never mind what she looked like, but he didn't. He let her sit. And her image became one of the closest things to immortal that we possess. Uh, 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 and is that what you want to do to our Jack? I did. But when I heard you raging at me down the phone, and when I saw you in action, and watched the vitality throbbing in the veins of your temples as you picked up that glass in defense of your man. I changed my mind. I'm not surprised. It has to be a double portrait. A series of portraits. Mr. and Mrs. Duckworth. <gasps> the study of a marriage. Do you mean you want to make us both immortal? I don't want, darling. I yearn. <gasps> Only me. Where have you been? I'll be going out my mind. Oh, I'm not used to people worrying about me. Yeah, well, maybe you should get used to it. It was all for calling around the hospitals. I'll make some coffee. Come here. Oh, I'm a big girl, Jamie. I can take care of myself. Why'd you disappear like that? Why? Because I can't stand to see what's going on in this house. There is nothing going on. I am your mother. Your real mother. And I'm a woman and I'm afraid for you. She's scared I'm gonna take you off her. She says she wants to get her claws in even deeper. You're off your head. Now go to bed and sleep it off. We'll talk about this later. Go to bed! Penny and Adam have been on at me all day about retiring. So if that's what you want to talk to me about, forget it. I've just popped my out a Christmas drink. That's all. Mind you, I wouldn't mind retiring myself. Life of leisure, golf in the old Spanish courses, mate. Bit of sangria, that'd do me. Do you think I'm stupid? No. Because that's exactly what they've just said. You're in on it as well, aren't you? Leave off. Hey, listen, is it such a bad thing? I mean, you're semi-retired already, aren't you? Look, between you and me, I know I haven't got the mind of a 30-year-old, but the problem is neither has Adam. He's dying to get his hands on the reins, but... I don't know, he, he's not ready yet. He's too green. We ain't gonna get an argument from me on that score, are you? You've got too much on your plate to carry him. I ain't being funny, Michael, but I'm doing that already. He needs to be looked after. And it'd be unfair of me to step down unless you two were equals. How do you mean equals? A partnership. That's what I've always thought about it, you know. that You know about that. Yeah, and that is what I bought into. And it seemed fair enough at the time. I, uh, you can't argue with a man who wants to leave his half of his business to his son, but things are a bit different now, Mike. How? Well, what do you mean, how? Have you forgotten But me and you, we're... Yeah, we're father and son. Well? Well, what? Well, then Adam and me are already equals, aren't we? I, and I just thought... In fact, I assume now it's all out in the open, you'd be leaving your half of the business to your two sons. I will when Adam's ready, then you'll be running the business 50-50. But, Mike, I've already bought 49% of the company. So when your 51% is split equally, I'll own three quarters, more or less, will not I? I'll be the boss and Adam being green ain't gonna matter so much. No, no. No, it won't work like that. Uh, you've both got to have, uh, level, um... What, crossing? No. 
No, no, uh, Eddie. Playing fields. Level playing fields. And how are we going to do that, Mike? How are we going to do that? I have grafted all my life in the rag trade. I've learnt the business. He's just straight out of public school. Yeah, but when he's ready, I'll give him his 50% and I'll give you your old 1%. And you think that's fair? Yeah, I think that's best. Well, what about paying me the money back I gave you for my 49% then? Well, what am I going to live on when I do retire? I'm going to need some cash behind me, aren't I? Maybe quite a bit. Adam and Penny want me to... Well, they want me to see a doctor. They keep on and on at me. To tell you the truth, I'm uh, getting a bit scared, but they keep banging away. It's, it's driving me around the bend. Have you noticed anything different about me lately? Like what? Well, they think I'm losing me marbles. Oh, I know I'm getting older and I get a bit forgetful now and then, but uh, do you think that's anything to worry about? Would you, do you think I ought to see a doctor? Now, come on, Danny, I want your honest opinion. You are as fit as a fiddle. You still drive a harder bargain than anyone I've ever met. You, Mike, take no notice of Adam and Penny, mate. They ain't got a clue. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It's very simple. Penny wants you all to herself, and Adam just wants to get his hands on his half of the factory before he's ready. Do you know that's exactly what I was thinking? <laughs> you see, there's life in the old dog yet. Let's have another one, shall we? Look what I found. You left it on the bed. Ah. What would you do without me, eh? What would I do without my credit cards? Thanks, mate. I'm going to miss you. Oh, I'll miss you. If you guys are coming over all romantic, then I'll make myself scarce. Yeah, you go for a nice bracing walk. Yeah, I think I will. Hope your mum's not too bad when you get there. Oh, so do I. Now, you look after yourself. And you. He's a sensitive soul, is Adam. Not at all like the rest of the Baldwins. Oh, you're not so bad. I wish I wasn't going. No, if your mother's sick, she's going to need you. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. You make sure you do. And there'll be a little uh, surprise for you. Really? What? I'm not going to tell you, but you like it. Oh. Eric sacked me. Oh, great. He said I was late, I was dirty, and I couldn't do the job. Yeah, well, you were late, and you are dirty. She's not even dressed. Why should she be? Oh, she can laze around. She's on holiday, Mum. I went out with that man. Carol, go and get a wash, clean yourself up. Don't you tell me what to do. You left here in a rush. You don't look your best. Eric was probably in a bad temper. It's got nothing to do with you. He'll give you your job back. He's bound to. Just make an effort, Carol. Are you deaf? He chucked me out. He told me to get lost. Did you throw up? No, I didn't. What's that, then? I spilt something. Spilt what? Oh, something. He was the first man who's looked at me in years. First decent man. Do you want us to go and have a word with him? Well, Jamie can go. You stay out of my business. Why should she when you're staying in her house? I don't want to stay in her house. And I don't want to go and plead for your job. Well, don't then. Don't bother. I won't. I'm going out. Get lost. Jamie? I'm going to have to see how Mike is. You want to get away from me? Well, yeah. That and all. You've got to be lonely in this place. Yes, well, I'll get more done by myself, don't I? Yeah, yeah well, you're not by yourself, are you? Cos I'm here. No, I know. Now, just clear off, eh? The girls are all over at Roy's Rolls. And that's the way I like it. The less I see them, the better. Ah, <sighs> who wants to be sat doing boring old paperwork the Wednesday after Christmas? Leanne, it's paperwork that keeps this place going, love, cos if I left it to Mike, we'd have garments up to the rafters and no-one to sell them to, OK? Oh, come on, he's not that bad. He is that bad, Lee, look. So? What do you mean, so? Look, stock sheets, memos, spreadsheets. Jewellery. Engagement ring. Yeah, but, I mean, what a ridiculous place to put it in there amongst the paperwork. PK, MB, 24th of the 12th, 2005. Mm, what do you think that might mean? I know exactly what it means. It means I've got something else to think about, doesn't it? Right. Let's shove that back and get out of here. Get your bag, come on. I don't have to live my life. You'll meet someone different, you'll love her, 
and everything will turn out fine. No, it won't. Oh, yes, you will. And when she does come along, Jamie, you grab her. Yeah. <laughs> You're young. Don't be disillusioned. No, I'd be happy and walk around with a big smile on my face. Yeah, well, there's always something to be happy about. Believe you me, you could have already met her. This wonderful woman. Yeah, you could have seen her, spoken to her. I mean, love's a slow burner. Sometimes you know someone for years before you realise she could already be in your life. She is. Oh, well, that is great. Yeah. Yeah, you'll soon forget about Leanne and your father. I'll forget about Leanne. Yeah, now tell me, Jamie, uh, does she like you, eh? Does she fancy you? Come on, you can tell me. I, I, I won't breathe the syllable. I won't tell a soul. Does she love you, Jamie? I think she does. <sighs> I, I hope she does. I love her. Well, well, that is great. Everything's all right. If I get engaged now, then get married next month. Well, that'd be a bit quick. All right, Easter then. Or even a lovely day in June. <laughs> You have to buy a new suit. Yeah. To wear while Penny takes over the factory. Yeah, well, she'll be within her rights, next to Ken and all that. Mm, she'll have the power, won't she? Yeah, won't she just? But if he dies... When he dies? I mean, he's bound to eventually, isn't he? Yeah. She'll inherit the lot without him at her side. And they'll shove me right down the pecking order. Thank you, Danny boy, and good night. <laughs> well, at least you know what you're up against. Yeah. Hiya. How are you doing? All right. Yes, good, you. Oh, fine, me. <laughs> Can we get you a drink? No, oh, no, so I've just got these ones. Why don't you come round to our house for tea? Dinner. We call it dinner. Come to dinner. Both of you. You'd be like a foursome. <laughs> we'll send Kirk and Chesney out at pictures. <laughs> and dog and all, we don't eat with the dog. We can have wine if you like. Not beer. Ah, oh. oh, sounds great. When? Tomorrow, New Year's Day. Oh, we can't. We're busy. You've got that work thing, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've got the work thing, yeah. Yeah, it's all day. And all night. Yeah, you see, that's the thing with work, isn't it? Yeah, it takes all your time, doesn't it? You don't want to come, do you? Yeah, 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 we'd love to come. You think you're too big for us now. That's it, isn't it? No, no, I don't. It'd be really nice to come. Oh, yeah, I, well, I couldn't think of anything nicer, really. <laughs> Imagine what it must be like performing in front of thousands of people. Gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. All of them there just for you. Because they love you. Every one of them loves you like mad. Must be like being a god. Being worshipped. That's how I feel about you. I worship you. Really? Yeah. Do me a favour. What? And quit me. You reckon there's something going on there? It's nothing to do with me. Oh, she's a top. Look at her flirting. I know she really fancies. You are sick, do you know that? I'm sick? What about her? She's a sick one. I'm sorry. What, Bob? I ain't sure, to be honest, but I usually find it quicker to apologise before I know what I've done. Saves a lot of time, though. You think my family are common? <gasps> did I say that? I did not say that. Yeah, well, it's what you think. Well, in that case, I apologise for thinking. Spend an evening with me, Is that a trick question? Right then, we're going. Okay, if that's what you want. No, it's not what I want, but it's what you deserve. All right, and if that makes sense to you, then that's fine by me. 